How's everybody doing today? Hopefully, everybody have a good Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. Let it give a little bit. Let a let people drop in. About to get started. Uh, you see how virtual layoff became the norm for the workplace. So I got laid off a couple of years back, but so we're gonna talk about it. It just caught my eye. Give me one in the chat if you can hear me. Give me one in the chat if you can hear me. You know how we do it. If you got any uh, cybersecurity tech, what's up, Wayne Wallace? If you got any uh, tech or cybersecurity questions, just drop them in the chat. You know we're going to get to them. I'm struggling today for some reason. How's everybody doing today? Let's see. I'm going to start this while everybody's falling in. We've played a couple times. Once again, drop any uh, cyber security questions or tech questions in the chat. Oh, I had a rough money today. So we know there was a big, uh, big tech layoff. What's up, casual economist? Glad you could join me. Glad you could join me. So uh, let's play this while people are falling in and we um, talk about it. What's up, D? How are you doing? D ready? We see you. Thanks for joining me. So once again, let's uh listen to it while they fall in. You know, we'll talk about layoffs, talk about fair work, talk a little bit about contracting, what to look for, when to jump ship. <laughs> so what's the what's the warning signs when you should get out? <laughs> so those are um, always positive. So let's listen to this uh, CNBC. Up to one of my friend's text messages that said, hey, were you just laid off by Google? I responded saying, I don't know what you're talking about. So I went to my work laptop and lo and behold, when I opened it, I was forbidden. I was locked out. I was. That's the thing, man. When you get that lockout, I used to do uh, security years ago for a mainframe. Your boss would send us something on Friday and send you fired. So we would lock you out all the stuff. If you came in Monday, you try to log in three times. Just start packing your box. Security's going to escort you out, player. Security about to escort you out. Just shocked, just chilled to the bone to read this email that was sent to my personal email. Say, you are no longer an employee. I had been at Google for four and a half years. My performance was great. This was something that kind of blew me out of the water. So these new virtual layoffs, I think, are very inhumane. They're Dude, I shout out to B2B. Hopefully he joined. I should tell him, you got to get out your feelings, man. The companies don't give a crap about you, man. You are a number. You are a resource, right? If your resource bills are bringing in more money than what they cost you, you stay. If you don't, you fired. So don't, don't get all uh, hummy chummy. My company loves you. If it's not your company player, you just a resource, man. Do not... I've seen 60 people escorted out of DOD and grown men crying because they came in on a Monday, they killed their project, and they just fired everybody on there. The company didn't tell them. They pissed off somebody high up in DOD, and they just they just terminated their company's contract, right? And it's called termination for convenience. I work with a lot of lawyers and contracts. Termination for convenience in a, is in a, most of your contracts. Shout out to Rama, Rhonda Rumfield. Glad you can join us. Let's, let's see my man right there. Uh, Wayne Wallace hitting me with the one. Shout out to Casual Economist again. Hit me with the hey, hey. Shout out to D Redding. Glad she could join us. Shout out to uh, Rhonda Rumfield. Glad you could join us. And uh, every most people know me. I'm Professor Black Ops, aka PBO. I've been in the technology for 30 years and I've been in cybersecurity for 15. If you got any questions, just jump them in the chat and we can. Talk about them now or save them to the end. We can make that happen. So let's keep going. Number one, PBO is always going to tell you, you're just a resource. 
Don't fall in love. Don't fall in love with the restricted stock units and the bonus. If it's a downturn and it's your number, it's going to be your number, right? Don't don't take it personal. It's just business. Always best to have more once. All facts, facts if possible. Definitely. Hopefully you get your your hustle on. Hopefully you know um you got side gigs. Um you got real estate. Shout out to the tech bros. Get your real estate on. So now you definitely uh correct uh Justin Williams. You should have more than one source of income. Especially, you know, PBO is over 50, man. I need to get some multiple sources of income. PBO ain't got much longer. You trying to retire in a minute. So evening. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh aka I'm part of the tech Avengers. So you definitely see me. I'm usually usually with Gay Bay on struggle security, but I am definitely part of the tech Avengers. So let's see shout out to my man for joining us let's see what jm definitely one of the day ones i think people should have at least six months oh facts 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 you know i'm not a, a financial channel but you definitely which i am a little light on right now I, i'm gonna be transparent jm is 100 percent correct you should have six months of your saving in there why is pbo a little light on his six month saving I invested in a lot of real estate and one of my deals didn't quite go <laughs> as planned. Long story short, I opened try to open up an Airbnb uh right before the pandemic. So I'm trying to get that back on track with some other investors I I I I invested in the property with. So PBO trying to get his little real estate game up. Shout out to the tech vendors. Most of those guys are actually on real estate. We might do a tech real estate. Um I think PBO kind of run his more as a hobby. I got to stop that and get it more, um, uh, more ran more like a business, right? Um, but no, shout out to that. So I get in that to another stream. I usually don't like talking about my my personal finances, but JM is J JM is a hundred percent correct. You should get your six months in there. Let's talk about one of the tech Avengers with the ten dollar uh, super chat for the barbecue fund. Shout out to Struggle Security. You want to come up, uh, Gabe? We talking about uh, what to look for <laughs> so not to get fired. Let me know if you want me to drop the link, Gabe. I'll drop it for you if you want to come up. But no, shout out to JM. Um, definitely get that six months. That's what PBO is working on right now, getting his, uh, his uh, emergency fund up. Like I said, I invested in a little too much real estate, so um, I had to go all in. <laughs> so you had to push all the chips in one time. Do you think data analysts will be a uh, field is uh do you think a data analysis field is a good career path for 2024 uh yeah I, th I think it is the thing um jerry Bo soleil i'm probably missing your name yeah i think it's a good field what i would do though is is once again i believe in stacking so part of your data analysis um i think that's a good mid-level senior i would say go to full stack uh development or my man b2b come go to become a data engineer where you do the pipeline along with the analysis right so you the full stack i'm calling data analysis i'm like where you load the data clean the data get it in the correct pipeline do the analysis then the next part of that shout out to ai and me you put it in artificial intelligence machine learning and they use that data to learn so i, I wouldn't stop there jerry i'm always trying to stack and get to the next level so I believe it's definitely for 2024, but I think the next level of that is uh, data engineer. Once again, creating a pipeline, make sure it's clean, getting it into the database, getting it ready for, once again for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, let me know if you want to come up, uh, uh, okay? I'll drop the link. I know you're busy sometime with the wife, the beautiful wife and the beautiful kids coming. So shout out to Gabe, man. Doing the right thing the right way. Shout out to him. International Airbnb <laughs> to place is also good. Day. I'm going to be transparent, JM. I'm in Indiana. We have a huge um, convention center. Um, two is, since we are a mid-level city, the small cities like it because they think it's big. The big city like it because they, they tired of all that traffic. So we get a ton of conventions. We get we get 5,000. We got 30,000 stormtroopers coming for, for Gen Con here. So not so so yeah so dropping it for you anybody can come up though I, I don't want to stop uh like I said the tech Avengers always dropping in so now nah, so yeah I'm so that's kind of where I'm doing it so we we definitely are tourist friendly we got about six or seven huge convention with more than fifty thousand people uh we definitely get the NCAA because the NCAA is actually in Indianapolis so we get the NCAA tournament I think we get the final four every three or four years 
we actually got a Super Bowl. So we actually a mid level JM. So we're not quite international, but we 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 got a good uh a convention center, especially in the summer. Uh the what is it? Future Farmers of America. I think they 30,000 deep right now. I think they're coming at the end of December and the beginning of January. So we we have a huge um convention. So let's see, let's listen to my man a little more. Once again, though, and uh you're just a resource. Um I work for big companies. I work for um, mid-sized um, consulting companies. I work for um, state agencies. And especially as a consultant, you definitely a number, right? So if they can't find you work, especially the smaller ones and the mid-level, you don't get much bench time. Now, shout out to Struggle. He might talk about them because they're a larger company. So they probably give you a year on a bench or so, <laughs> right? Because they got those type of resources. So they can actually um, float you on that. So you get, you need to understand what type of company you work for. Like I know sometimes I work for smaller body shops, meaning uh, job PBO. When the contract in, no PBO, right? So I know what the client is. I know what the client bills, right? So if the client's billing ninety dollars an hour, one ten, one twenty, PBO want eighty percent of that, right? I want seventy five percent of that. Right. So but once again, we're going to talk about layoffs. Once again, uh, large consultant, medium companies, small companies, just um, even permanent jobs. Right. If there's a downturn, you, you, you're going to get fired. You're going to be like this dude right here with the with the cute mustache. You're going to get that on your personal email talking about you are done. Right. So let's listen to a little more. Shout out to CNBC doing a bit. Very impersonal and they don't treat you as an actual human being. Virtual layoffs are when companies decide to lay off, let go, and terminate roles of team members by email, by phone, by text, or even by video apps like Zoom or pre-recorded videos. We are seeing a rise in virtual layoffs. First is because of the pandemic. Pandemic normalized the adoption of remote work and virtual communications. So organization realized that it's possible to conduct business virtually, including communicating difficult messages to employees, such as layoff announcements. Also, they learned that probably virtual layoffs can be more cost and time effective for big organizations. They don't need to hire external contractor and like send them to all different offices. Shout out to the tech avenger. You want to chime in before I keep it going? Just talking about virtual layoffs and you good? Okay, I'll keep it rolling. This is a cost the nation. Just imagine how much travel expenses they are saving. Yeah, I want to, before we get into that huge tech hiring freeze, I interviewed with uh, Amazon. It didn't go well, but they were hiring like, I, when I was sent, they said they were going to hire a thousand security people. Now, I don't know how many of those people got laid out, but they about to talk about the big uh, tech hiring spree. Now, a lot of those companies are, are letting, letting some of those people go, right? So um, I don't know if the uh, cybersecurity people are getting laid off, but I know a lot of <laughs> tech people are getting laid off, right? And two is, I'm going to let uh, Gabe chime in if he wants to in a minute, is you're just a resource. Don't don't get, don't get uh, over-enthused with the, the company function, the Christmas party, we love you card, happy birthday card, because if they lose money, your ass is gone, right? I got laid off, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So, But I, I, once again, I knew it was coming. I was on the bench for six months, meaning mm. they were looking for me for work. So PBO ain't dumb. I'm like, okay, I got this six. My time's about up, right? Because I work for a smaller company. I didn't work for the big dogs like like Gabe. Hey, <laughs> chime in on that, man. Chime yeah, in. man. So I think, yeah, and can you hear me good? It's my audio. Yeah, you crystal, crystal. Yeah, yeah, you crystal clear, man. So can I? So yeah, like right along with you, man. It's um these these tech these tech hiring so like speaking of amazon they were hiring like crazy and they were hiring re remote roles but you know a lot of that yep. has has changed now because i know that even recruiters that reach out now they said that they're just they're just going for in person for right now whoever's able to come into the office those are the roles that that they're hiring for 
they were saying that they're not really going with re remote anymore more but i don't know where they like yeah it's slowed down it's definitely slowed down and also i want to agree with your point about us just being a resource in many cases like everybody's just a resource right to produce a particular output of work once you produce that that output of work is the value that you bring to that organization that's why sometimes like you know and maybe we'll get into it more as it concerns these relationships at work people want to be mm -hmm. like your friends i'm like this right. if you're looking for friends work isn't the place to find it like you know right. it's, it's very important to separate the two do, do you think that's a set up by the company that managers they tell you to you know connect with your employees make them feel like they're family yeah right so do you think that's the setup it is. <laughs> so, i don't know <laughs> it is at times but i but at the same time it's like it just depends on the organization and your particular manager like i think that developing right. good working relationships with people is important right. but friendships and buddy buddy at times it can be like that so I, i'm also noticing like the higher and higher you you go and i've been coached about this so many times they're like you know they gotta like you they gotta want to enjoy Facts. being around you they gotta you, you know find similarities in life with you and hobbies and all Facts. that stuff and i'm just like man i'm not with it man i i want my work to speak for itself but in many <laughs> cases the relationships is what really gives you the cachet within your field the higher and higher that you go so it, it the, becomes the, difficult yeah yeah because we talked about that you're 100 right mm -hmm. and i tell people is especially after you leave i'm probably at the highest level of individual contribute once you leave that right especially when you're talking about right even right in the senior director senior manager yeah. it's maybe what 10 of those 30 of those in the organization you got a thousand people trying to get those jobs man yeah. so after a while it, it actually becomes a popularity contest because mm -hmm. after a while unless you killing it killing it everybody got the same degree everybody got the same search right. everybody's showing kind of the same i'm that guy right in tech so see and i think that that's where that you really got to start to differentiate yourself in a positive way um right, it's fun. social media a lot of people at those right. levels are not utilizing social media in order to right. kind of promote themselves and kind of show individuals right. their skill sets so you know i'm right. i'm actually like i haven't posted in a couple of weeks or probably about a week and i'm really want to start to develop more of that like SME or or leadership mm -hmm. type of content right. so you know I'm taking my time man so you know I'm doing some restructuring and content but uh yeah man they got some popularity contest at a certain point so it is it is but two you right because I actually got my interview with AWS mm -hmm. somebody saw my YouTube channel yep. and I posted on LinkedIn and a recruiter saw it and was like you want to interview I go why yes I do for that 342 thousand yeah. why yes I do <laughs> but two is and I think that's kind of it. Um, like you said, what makes you a SME? What kind of yeah. differentiates yourself? Like somebody reached out. I'm supposed to be um, speaking at a remote. I think it was a Black Data Processing Conference. Okay. They want me to present. Yeah. So, so I'm doing some zero trust stuff. Yeah. And some this stuff, that cool stuff. So that kind of differenti differentiates you when you yeah. start speaking in front of those and people start knowing who you are. Yeah. So like you said, that, that's kind of different. Let me read a couple of these uh, sure. chats. Good Daniel Reddy said, I was laid out by phone in 2012. I didn't realize they could do that to people. Maybe I just figured it out what everyone can I'll get away with, maybe. Yeah, that's facts. And I, that's why my channel, uh, uh, Stroke Security, we're trying to let you know you're just a resource. I think people think, because most states are, are right to work states. And the other part of that is most companies have a lot of lawyers, so they know what they can yeah. do. So they they're not gonna set themselves up for a lawsuit on top of that. So yep. no, you right, D ready. So you gotta be careful because they don't love you, man. You just a resource. No. And, uh I'm gonna let you chime on this scam diesel. I disagree with you. Most aren't most in Texas. No, 1099. Because mm -mm. a lot of times too is Microsoft got sued for that. I want to say in 2020. No, I'm sorry, probably 2015. Uh, Microsoft had a lot of people designated at 1099, yeah. but they really was turned out to be so they actually sued it. They actually sued Microsoft and won. Mm -hmm. I'm in Indiana. We had a Fortune Finder company called Eli Lilly. They got sued for the same thing. They were they were really employees. They go on picnics and everything, but they mm -hmm. didn't give them benefits. So those employees came back and sued the government. So I think you very rarely see 1099 as yeah. much. Yeah, I wouldn't you say that 1099s are are the most common tech no uh, employee yeah. employees yeah those are more like 
So, so you would bring in 1099s as like supplemental staffing or or short term, short, short term. Yes, it's, short, it's typically short term. And this is when people mm -hmm. were doing that a, a lot of the overemployment. That's the way that they were doing it. Right. They we're getting a lot right. of short term right. gigs. And like, yeah, I'm making this and this and this, but they don't recognize that like a lot of those gigs are like what five to six months, maybe a year right. max. Like a year right. long right. Con right. contract is considered like wow, like you really have some have some stay time within that company but that's those are the yeah, yeah. typicals yeah yeah i'm gonna be super transparent with people is too yeah. is and gay probably knew this i was a little young when i did i did 1099 to a good friend of mine i'm a white guy showed me how to make money yeah. he paid me 77 dollars an hour which mm. was cool we talking about two thousand I didn't pay my taxes, man. I ended up on $44,000 for one year. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. I got PBL once again made a bad decision. But the cool thing about the feds, they let you get on a payment plan. <laughs> yeah. So they, I paid it out for that. like three years. But that state is different. 1099. You get 1099. Yeah. 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 The other part about that is you're really a company. So you got to pay both sides of your taxes mm -hmm. and your insurance. So I think a lot of people think they're making money, but 10% that your right. company pays. That can add up for me it was 44,000. Well, probably right. half of that. They probably was paying 23, 24, and I owe the other 20. So a yeah. lot of people don't put that in their bill rate when they're doing 1099. 100%. I'm old now. Yeah, my two, I'm old, man, and fat. So my insurance is gonna be astronomical now. I right. didn't just shake like Gabe. He's young having kids, no, man. man. I, I ain't like Gabe no more. <laughs> Cobra, <PBO>. right? <laughs> yeah, Cobra. Yeah, that 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 Cobra is very expensive. Thousands of dollars a month, or a thousand, at, at least a thousand a month. For uh, so yeah, like you really, if you're going 1099 or some type of contracting row, you really want to have your ducks, ducks, ducks in a row. Many times people go W two because it handles right. all your taxes and everything right. and during tax time. Them. You just turn in your your um, w, w what W two two two, yeah. two forms, but yeah. otherwise, like we had actually hired a CPA to really set it up because my wife is considering going 1099 in the medical field okay and okay. you know setting up a business bank account having an llc having right. all the money funnel into that business bank account you right. pay yourself right. a quote unquote right. livable wage and right. then right. you also put money aside for different write-offs and things and you don't swipe it for everything you swipe it for certain expenses so right. you know you really have to have a structure in place if you're talking about doing 1099 contracting work yeah and, and gabe is right and i was getting it set up but PBO was going to Vegas and making it rain. He was making yeah. bad decisions. <laughs> he making yeah. bad decisions. But no, nah, mm -hmm. but that's too is Buffer Eye Channel is going to show you how do you set up professionally to do tech work, right? That's taking it to yeah. the next level. Do Are you going to set up a company? How are you going to, uh, like like Gabe said, how are you going to market your company? You can do mm -hmm. that with social media, uh, LinkedIn, which makes you a SME. You can go out present, right? And even internally, uh, those things make you a SME so you get promoted in your company too, right? Yeah. So there, there's two ways to do that. Uh, Format 27, he said, what small company that you sit on the bench for six months? Oh, that was great. Actually, I think I got seven months out there. Yeah, I can't really? play. Long story short is I was working for a bigger company. I was actually on a short-term contract. I mm -hmm. was cool with the CIO and he said, dude, since you're on a short-term contract, he had to write up all his documentation so right. the, the company i went to was a smaller company they had a long-term contract so i actually took my contract to them mm, right okay so i actually got them in the door so i think that's one reason i got that because i got yeah. them introduced to the agency i worked for i was actually doing some marketing work for them so i actually yeah. kind of started that business so when i got laid off i'm thinking hell i built the built that business for them they don't they don't have any other mm -hmm. client clients doing that type of work right so that was yeah. kind of them trying to find that type of business that they really didn't grow into right once mm -hmm. again i was cool with the cio and the other thing is we're going to get to that when he knew my bill rate was the highest in the department he told me a year before he we brought me off he said hi tell you my guy i can't fit you in my budget at the end of your contract in a year yeah. you out of here i'm like cool man yeah. i got a year to find some right you usually don't get no notice like that no so I had a year it'll to be They'll give you a t t man. I I was on a contract road. They gave me a couple weeks, maybe at the max. It was about a week, week and a half at the max yeah. to skedaddle. Yeah, signed a so year lease on the on their apartment. I was, oh, I, was I mean, I had yeah. to break that mug early. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about that in. Well, like you said, when you get broke, if you don't have your ducks in a row of what your plan is, you should always yeah. have a plan. If if I get walked out of this office. How am I going to live for the next six months? Do I got right. my emergency fund? Can I, I own a little real estate? Can I take a, a 
quick loan, give me a refile real quick so I can have some money in my yeah. pocket, right? Right. So yeah. you should have that stuff lined up so you know what to do when it happens. You don't have to no, walk around with no no plan, right? So what's the plan? Yep. No, nah, Scappy D's, you good. So yeah, we both of us, we don't see, like I said, usually when I see 1099, it's, it's super mm-hmm. short term, right? Yeah. Shout out to my man, Engineering Cannabis, aka Tech RX. Girls, you social media for data privacy. She got the 360 with Google. Later, 400K, post the link. Facts, facts. Uh, mm-hmm. I got a tech live, 400,000 after leaving the law firm. We don't need tech, traditional tech background to see. MMSD con. I'm going to send them to your channel, man. I'm more traditional than that. Most of my stuff mm-hmm. to the basic, man. Oh, yeah, shout out to that. So, what she basically saying is, if you're doing 1099, you need to bump up your salary a little bit, 1.5 or 2 to cover your, your taxes, cover your insurance, cover your dental. If you need a crown and you got to pay for it out of pocket, yeah, right? That's going to be a different level. How do you come up with that plan, asking for a friend? Um, It's just sitting down. We go over the plan. Basically, shout out to uh, my mm-hmm. man put it in there. Who put it in there at first? Basically, it's just really basic Um. Dave type six months, uh, emergency fund, you know, mm-hmm. what, what's multiple sources of income? Do you own real estate? Do you got stocks and bonds? Right. Two is me. I'm cool with some people where I know if I get laid off, I could get probably hired in three weeks, but I'm about to drive into the office and I'm going to be very grumpy. Right. But I know if I need something, I could go get a job making maybe 90 or 95, you know, which I, to, but mm-hmm. I know I can start working in two weeks, right? so i can get some income to know i wouldn't be out there so those are yeah. things you need to have pre-set up because like um like gabe was saying is those are the relationships i built up over the years right mm-hmm. you know i know some guys I- and on some staffing companies they know some cyber security companies. i know i can always go back to the state of indiana i know a couple big agencies out there the states don't pay well but i, I can know i could go in there and get them and uh get a job making 90 95 because it's a hard it's hard to make 100 out of state if you ain't in the c-suite usually mm-hmm. the state that states don't pay but once again i know i can get a job pretty quick and uh get in there what's your thoughts yeah. on that game now i was gonna say I, th- I think it first starts off with just understanding how much does it cost for you to live oh, talk right. about how much do you spend monthly in food how much do you spend monthly on living expenses your car note just understanding what that is at a base level um, say for instance, it's like say for instance, two thousand twenty five hundred dollars, right? A month. You multiply that by twelve. That's where you start to get. Okay, this is how much I need a year in order to live. So definitely, first take starting off with your your monthly expenses and understanding how much annually that would take, and then you just start saving up little by little, right? right. Having that at a base, but then also as PBO was speaking about, with having additional streams streams of income. Um, uh, like like we were saying, real estate, but also when you're laid off from an organization, know your benefits. Know your benefits. Nice. You can apply nice. for unemployment in many cases. Nice. Nice. So unemployment isn't just for people who are you know des- destitute. Okay. It's actually a privilege and a right that you have. So when you sign in your contract, you can apply for unemployment in that state where you were laid off. Now, if you nice. get fired, that's a different story. Oh, nice. no, no, if you leave, that's a different story. Nice, nice. But if you get laid off, you are eligible for unemployment. Because there was nice. a situation where my contract ended. I had a 12-month lease on the, uh, on an apartment. My contract ended at 10 months. And as a result, I got I had some rental property, but I also was had unemployment. So unemployment combined with my rental property was plenty to take care of my month-to-month expenses. I was right, a single right. guy living in Charlotte, North Carolina, very low cost of living place. And I just kind of chilled for a couple of months until I found the opportunity that best aligned with where I was trying to go. So understanding unemployment, how much it costs, just and you just kind of build it up from there as it concerns that plan. And a good thing, and I think we we talk about that, especially in a community is mm-hmm. Don't be going out and get the nine hundred dollar car payment, man. I know you right. want a flouse, man. Don't get the four thousand uh, dollar penthouse suite in New York, <laughs> right? So right. you should try to keep your expenses low. So when you, so if you need to move, you can move, right? Let me yeah. play this a little more, real quick. Mm-hmm. Let me play this a little more. As the pandemic hit the U.S. economy in March 2020, it raced nearly 20 million jobs in a matter of weeks. The unemployment rate rocketed to 14.7%, the highest level since the Great Depression. As remote work became widespread and interest rates hit rock bottom levels, big tech companies went on a hiring spree. In 2020, Amazon added half a million employees, an over 38% increase. Microsoft added 18,000, an 11% increase. 
Meta added over 13,000, a 30% increase, and Google Parent Alphabet added over 16,000, a nearly 14% increase, while Apple added less than 7,000. Federal Reserve. Do what you think about that, man. You think they overhired back there? I mean, let me go back. Yeah, well, well a little bit. When you look at the projections and and how much the the tech stock was going up, it just I mean, they were just like, let me just bring in, bring in folk in the event that we have a surge. So, you know, having a having a bench of talented professionals is better than not having a bench of those talented pro professionals available. So I think that, yeah, they did a lot of overhiring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but like we talked about, too, though, is since you're just a resource, if they can't deploy you to make money after a while. Now, these mm -hmm. big companies can keep you on a bench for a little while, but still after a while. You're gonna get cut like they Absolutely. I'm sure they're gonna get to the part where they're gonna get so when PBO was on a bench after four or five months, PBO was like, I gotta start looking because I know this ain't right. So yeah, you did, so you need to understand what's going on around you. Don't be sleepwalking, right? PBO yeah. know that it's only gonna they like me, but they don't like me like that. So after a while, yeah. I knew I was gonna get fired. The thing I, I kind of miscalculated was I thought they were gonna give me a year for all the work. A lot of people are going to get fired in December. I actually talked to my supervisor. He said, dude, you old enough. They want to clear their books for the new year. Hmm. I didn't think about that. I was like, oh, yeah, I missed that. <laughs> so they were just yeah. cleaning their books. They want to get all their people they letting go. Then they want to start in their new year, whatever whatever new business they want to get, mm -hmm. who, who their top, you know. I was the top, but they couldn't find no business in GRC, right? Yeah. So, so a lot of people get because I was like, why would you fire somebody around Christmas? Because that's bad PR. That's a bad look. But when I thought about clearing up the books, I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's much more important than Christmas. Right. Right. So go, right. Go, go ahead on that. No, that's that's the thing. And, and, I, and I like the point that you brought up about looking around you. Um, many of these companies had invested in the Metasphere. Right. right or the metaverse the right metaverse. that was a big talking right during COVID. Right. everybody was talking about the metaverse 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 right. what happened right. to that or these companies would be invested in aspects of of cryptocurrencies like blockchain and everything right. you don't see a lot of wide adoption of it right now so you know there's right. technologies that they were hiring for that they put their bets on mm -hmm. and they hired and staffed and resourced um in order to support that type of work but they kind of fell fell flat to the market so really understanding on where you are and how viable your skill set is in the tech market is also in, in, important at this time. Now, I'm not saying that those technologies are, are completely gone, but they there's definitely not as much of a demand as there was during this time when 2020, 2021, everybody was talking about cryptocurrency. Everybody mm -hmm. was talking about the metaverse. They said, this is the next, next thing. Everybody's going to build the internet. You're going to have a digital version of yourself. I heard people right. talking about they selling uh, uh, digital real estate. Real estate facts, they were paying right. for the, and, 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 and these NFTs. What happened to all that? So, you know, yeah. some of these companies were making these technology bets facts, that, right. listen, they they crapped out. So, hey. No, facts, facts. The but, uh, the market. Yeah, but we we both know, too, is most tech's going to have some R&D in it. That's how you get right. to the next. But that don't mean every R&D is going to hit, like you said. Yeah, so nope. you got to understand where you at. You, it's good to be on the cutting edge, but if you're too far out there, you're going to get yep. whacked, right? So Absolutely. that's part of the game. Because there wasn't I'm... that much of a bet on artificial intelligence. There was conversation about it. But look at today. 2023 is a year is the explosion of art commercial artificial intelligence no, right lies, man. that Chat that GPT. wasn't the conversation back then no. nobody was talking 2020 when they were doing all this hiring they were not hiring a, a whole bunch of artificial intelligence professionals no no so, you, you know but two thing. is we know and you getting up there too is every yeah. three or four years you have the it technology right if that's right, right. a database like you said the metaverse crypto mm -hmm. we went from client service to the cloud right so right. cloud assist. so you always have and i always tell people that's the cool thing about tech because if you catch the right wave you can make yep. six figures and ride it for a decade my first yep. bag was oracle d oracle dba because they were the first database for the government i mm -hmm. jumped on it it was hot yep. boom i rolled it so yeah now shout out to tech cards pbo no hellcat yeah we got shut down mm -hmm. the hellcat game now, nah, Zach, all good. Appreciate you. Let's see. Yep, AI, like you said, AI is yep. the hot new thing. So let's see what else my, uh, let's see. Any up, Internet of Things. Yeah, that kind of yeah, died I down a little bit. Yeah, a that was bit. hot. It's kind of dying down a little bit. But, you know, it's kind of like it's just now just integrated into everything, like embedded right. systems, embedded devices, Internet of Things. It's just mm -hmm. like, like I, like I did an assessment. Actually, it was during COVID. It was 
the integration of internet of things into building management systems. Mm -hmm. So like the lighting system, it came with an app. That app yeah. had talked to some type of receiver. That receiver right. controlled the lights all around the building. That's what you would consider IoT. It's making light systems smart. Right. So, you know, it's now more just in depth or in mm -hmm. integrated into yeah. everything now rather than such such of a like a, a talking point within tech. And I'm going to jump on the end of that. And two, from a cybersecurity perspective is if you Google, I want to say it's 10 years ago, the fish tank, since it was salt water, called back to the person that took care of the salt water so mm. to make sure they weren't bad, they would come out. Somebody hacked them through the fish tank because it was open oh, to the internet, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So when I was at the state, we got some HPA software. I reviewed it for security. Anything on our network, I don't care if it's the fish tank, the HVAC mm -hmm. unit, we're looking at it from a risk assessment. What right. part of the network you're on, we're going to put you on your VLAN. Hopefully, we're going to give you your own certificates so when you call back, y'all can authenticate with certificates. Just yep. not name it password. Y'all passing it to clear over the <laughs> internet, right? So, so when he says Internet of Things, you got to make sure you review that because, like you said, people just said nonchalant. Oh yeah, we want to check our HVAC from our house. Right. Well, that's just on the internet. I need to do a risk assessment. Man. How's it connected? Yep. How are you connected? Are you MFA when you count when you dialing in? Is the food hell the fish tank talking to? Right. So. Yep. So anything on there, you got to do a security review. So just want to chime in on that. That for all the security professionals in there, you got a lot of future work to look at. So let's mm -hmm. keep going on my virtual layout. Thousand, a nearly 14% increase, while Apple added less than 7,000. Federal Reserve raising interest rates to a new range of 0.25 to 0. Then the Fed began its fight against inflation, raising interest rates at a pace not seen in decades. That hit tech companies hard because they relied on low interest rates to fuel growth. Last week, he fired more than nine. 100 people on one Zoom call. Tom, a mortgage lending company, was one of the many companies that had to lay off their employees because of this. The way its CEO handled the firing received a huge backlash. If you're on this call, you are part of the unlucky group. Your employment hey. here is terminated. <laughs> Damn. Effective immediately. I think what happened in 2021, December, was that we were amongst the first companies to have to do uh, major reductions in force as uh, the economic environment was changing. We were a company of less than 100 people in 2017, and we became a company of 10,000 people by 2021. And my leadership style, which had been all about grow, 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 and really growth at all costs, meant that the focus of the business was about doing what it needed to do to grow and less about how people were feeling about it. A lot of the criticism was, deserved. We made a mistake. We learned from it. And now we're better. The better.com incident was so let's talk about that. And that's one thing that uh, that even like he mentioned it, you need coaching. Even I need coaching. Because that that car was brutal, man. <laughs> yeah, we got 900 people y'all out of here. <laughs> right before the holidays. you were the unlucky ones. What's your thought on that? <laughs> I'll let you chime in. You on mute. You on mute, Gabe. I can't hear you. I'm not about to say look who's still there. Look who's still that CEO right. is still there. He said, ah, I made a mistake. Now I'm better. Like, like, right? He doesn't, he he didn't have to pick up the pieces. Those 900 employees had to pick up those 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 pieces right. of that firing. So, you know, I mean, hey, that's that's the game, man. That's that is that is the game. The ones that are in power, the ones that are on top are the ones who make the rules to make the hard decisions for the business. So Hey, I say, I say treat you like you even mentioned treat yourself as a business, treat yourself as a business. If there is a risk of you not being able to function, if your business is going down or unemployment or you might not have funds to provide yourself with what you need, man, you need to seek otherwise. And that's why I say you treat these companies just like just like they treat you. Treat them just like they treat you. Get get what you need out of them and then dip if there's better opportunities like you. You have no, there's, there's no loyalty because they're not loyal to you. Now pause there because I, <laughs> I said a lot. No. Yeah. No, like, well, like we like, you know, just timing and what he said is you're just a resource, man. Yeah. Don't, don't get over yourself is the more skills you have, you're more, you're a more valuable resource. Right. So two ways they make more money on you and they can bill you out more or you generate that much, uh, value. Yeah. Or they're going to get fired. You right. So you're paying your value. Right. So, yeah. Sometimes you got to realize that if you're at the top of the pay, 
if something happened, you're gonna get cut. Once again, yeah. I think I was the I think I was the that second or third highest paid mm -hmm. at the agency I was at. I think they kept the other two. They had 20 consultants. I think I made it to the last three or two. But once again, I had the connection with the CIO. So he whispered in my ear, he goes, You ain't gonna be here next year. So <laughs> I'm yeah. like, they're looking out for me. But most people don't tell you that, man. I like you said, that was very rare. Most people tell you a month at the most, and you you're yeah. out of there, right? That's why I so say, man, me. you gotta generate. I, I feel like you have to generate your own career cap it's it's a book i was reading right. um what's it called be so good that they can't deny you it talks about career capital right it's like yeah. what like generate the value your career value outside of your organization you should be able to stand in the field in the market in your industry as an entity valuable to the market rather than just being valuable to the organization you work for look look for ways to distinguish yourself in that way and that gives you way more power over your career where a layoff is just a it's just a bump in the road in comparison to a whole life changing e event when you have way more career capital outside of your company. So. Right. And and part of career capital is what sector are you on and what skills do you have yep. so that so you can leverage your capital. Right? Mm -hmm. If you are hot like right now, cloud engineers, cloud DevOps, SecOps, right? If you have those skills, right, you have more capital. Right. But if you're at the lower rung, you don't have as much capital. Mm -hmm. All right. So there so there's a, a catch 22 in there. Let me listen a little more of this uh game. Sure. Let me play a little more of this. Just a start. More and more big tech companies began adopting virtual layoffs. I want to say, you know, up front, uh, that I take full responsibility for this decision. In November of 2022, Meta laid off 11,000 workers, and Meta wow. CEO Mark Zuckerberg delivered the news over a remote video call. For our direction um, and for, for deciding you know, how we execute that, including things like this. And, in 2022, as soon as Elon Musk bought Twitter, he laid off half its workforce. Hold on, real quick. Once on that, like you said, Mark is okay, but he laid off what eleven thousand people. That's eleven thousand. But but for him, what that was only like four or five percent because they got like a hundred thousand employees. They got a yeah. crazy amount of a workforce. So percentage wise, but as a person being laid off, when you when you one of those eleven thousand, you don't give a shit. You just feeling no. bad because you out of there, right? You know, it was some people who have, who 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 were there multi like since the beginning. Right, somebody. Yep. Was, it, it was some people who had a lot of tenure in those layoffs. Mm. So you know, it was yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, especially in Twitter. Twitter, a lot of they top people. Oh. Had left. Yep. Yeah, because uh, Elon don't care, man. He at was all. bringing in his whole squad. He was smash. He was smashing t people at the top. Top, like you said, that I, I'm calling it tenure, like that. Mm. They're a profession, but they had a lot of a lot of time in. So let's see what my man Justin Williams say. I'm starting to wonder if it's worth being an individual and contributor. The ones at the top fell for even if they let go the only problem with that is you got to be an individual contributor before you get to the senior role senior yeah. developers i mean you got to spend a little time as an individual but also remember though is i'm gonna let gabe chime in on it i always see a lot of times middle management get taken out because mm. the supervisors and those guys you know because a lot of times if your individual contributors are making money work for couple, the people supervising them if, if, if you had 15 I can get rid of a guy and make him manage 30. So a lot of times I see mental management getting squeezed first. Mm. Um, so what's your thought on that? I've just seen it where I worked it. I've seen that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That that happens. Um, yeah, I agree. Like at the top, but at the same time, at the top, it's a little bit more, you got a little bit more cushion, right? You can, yep. you can, a lot. if somebody got to get fired, the manager is going to fire them. They're going to let them know that they are the ones getting let go. Like I almost had to do that most recently somebody like you were mentioned was on the bench for too long almost had to yeah. get a notice but uh they eventually got staffed on something which was good but um yeah, yeah it just depends it it depends on what you want to do it really does because you could be a very high paid valuable having fun type of individual contributor but it, it could be fun in the manager and above level too the people um leader type of thing so it all depends on what you want to do like you said, it's different headaches. Like I said, I supervise yeah. and led a little bit. My first team was good. My next two teams almost took me out, mm -hmm. man. Uh, you you know, talked about that. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times too is, and I'm sure you've seen it a lot of times. They could with my boss. They're going around me. I'm like, hey, dude, you got to send them back mm -hmm. to me, <laughs> right? So yeah. it depends too how your upper management handles and those connections and 
like you said, everything has its headaches. But mm-hmm. like you said, if, if you're good enough to get to the top, when well, you're talking about CTO, CISO, senior developers, those positions are coveted and it's super hard to get. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you chime in on that. You're way closer to that than I am. I talk to those. No, guys, it is. I, I, yeah, it is. It's more difficult to get into those those roles. I actually had um, I was given an offer not not too long ago for a director role. For a, for a consulting firm but the problem was is that i was going to have to travel be on travel from almost 50 50 percent yeah. at a time yeah. and the yeah. issue was not the the issue of the business but it's like i had to create the business justification to hire yeah. more and to do resources so i would have to be executing as an individual contributor sh- and also win business to show value mm-hmm. in the work that for my practice but at the same time, I'm I have to create the business just justification to the VPs and then the directors to say, listen, I'm charged. So I have to literally be charged almost like 150 percent of the time in order to hire somebody else in order to yeah. take on some of that burden. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, so for me yeah. at the point in my life, it's not really worth it to try to build a practice from bottom to up. Now, that would be something very valuable to organizations. Yeah. Hey, this guy yeah. came in there. He changed everything. He, he had his hands in everything and he built up his practice. And now the practice is what it is today. Would have been something great. But at the same time, how am I going to balance that w- with my family? How am I going to b- balance that with um, my health? How am I going to balance you know. that with doing YouTube content creation? There is no balance yeah. there, right? I would literally have to give a part of my life for that mm-hmm. practice in, in order for me right. to get that. Now, right? I bet it, right? There's a roll the dice on that one because it 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 could have played out really well into my favor but at the same time i'm like i'm not willing to give up home life for this business um even for this a short period of time so you it's it's all choices all choices you got to make but yeah uh you you can uh answer this or not if you did that why don't you just build up your own practice because that's really building up a big build up because it was still with a firm. But so it was still oh. with a firm. I would have still had resources, right. would have still right. had, right. but if you build it up from the bottom up, man, man, man. Uh, so I'm cause saying. cause that's the thing. Like they all already had pre-existing customers where I'm able to okay, kind of okay. come in and show the value of yeah. my particular um I professional see. service yeah, yeah. portfolio. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I would I would have almost a head, I would have a head a head start already. Yeah, 100 percent But if I was like doing said, it they on had my a, own, the connections. But if I was doing it on yeah. my own, that'd be a whole different monster. Well, well, true, but I think I mm-hmm. you you have relationships now, right? That you built up. I mean, some where yeah, can, but night. Like, yeah, but yeah. but but just like you said, that yeah. you gotta work for the company's 50 doing it on your own. You might have a 10% yeah. head start, right? Yeah, so there's man. a gap in there. Now I, I know what you're talking it's about. It's a lot, it's a lot. Now, they, now, now these are choices that different people might. They might be like, yeah, take that hit. Yeah, definitely. It'll pay off at the end because you will be known. And, and that's the thing I was thinking in my mind. I, it was, that's why it was a difficult decision. Like you'll be known as someone who comes into the door and is able to create the business justification and grow a, a professional services, cybersecurity services practice by yourself. Right. right? I, I would have had one other resource and then the backing of whatever VP I was going to be reporting to. And that's another thing who you report to. I would have be I would have been reporting to a VP who reports to the CEO of the company. So I was oh, two right steps right. away from the CEO. So right, a lot of career, right? A lot of career capital there that I could have got. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not gonna miss the 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 early years of my children's lives. No. No, fine, fine. It's not worth it to me. But but for others, it might be. Now, if I was single, no. right? If I was single, I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's make it happen. But yeah, man. No, no, facts, facts. Yeah. Let's see what just say. They get fired, I guess, to see sweet and get the bags on the way out. But that's only a few people. I think the media chimes in. Most people get escorted out, ain't gonna get jacked, man. Now, if you're there, you might you're gonna have your restricted stock units, but most people they get escorted out and whatever you got in your retirement, your 401k, you yeah. you get that, your ass get escorted out. So I think from my stand, I'll let you chime in. I think that's uh a, a few people, Justin, in, in the yeah. reality, especially when you're talking about most small and mid sized companies, mm-hmm. they're not getting golden parachutes. No, man. Those guys are out of there, man. You typically don't. You typically don't. Yeah. So I agree with you on that one. But actually, I got to drop down, man. I just got to get no, some other cool. stuff. But yeah, man, thanks no, for having me, man. You. I'll try to come to the next one. No. All right. No, that's cool. Let me know when you're going to throw up the uh, Tech Avengers back we'll signal. Do. I'll be there. We'll do. All right, All man. Right, peace man. out. I appreciate you. Yep. 
go check out my man struggle security go subscribe to him i know most people know hell i gotta have my people from him but yeah go check him out definitely in a cyber security game one of the few people i know in the uh, management um he yo know, got off that management track to stay into the tech consulting track so i always like to bring him up because he's actually living that, that management life so once again any questions drop them in the chat we're going to continue to listen to this uh with some staff losing access to their company's email without prior notice virtual layoffs have continued in 2023 as well in january google laid off thousands of its employees over email well, google was the company i wanted to work for and i felt so amazing that i was inside i felt like i was a foreigner that really i had to keep pinching myself that i was there i mean i utilize the gym i utilize the bikes i utilize the massage i utilized every type of perk that was possible and i never thought that it one day snap it would be gone and i think it's very convenient to send an email on friday we're sent to the office and tell them that they no longer have a job it makes it very easy on the leadership and it creates a I have to stop it there real quick once again chime in from a cyber security perspective we need you to do that because if you're on a network and you're unhappy man you can start deleting stuff some of those guys are highly skilled they can start dropping malware and stuff they can start putting viruses and time bombs in those networks you have to physically lock those people out i know it's not the pc thing to do but from a cyber security perspective you you were a resource now you a threat we gotta lock you out so i don't know what this dude uh talking about uh kumbaya guy but from a cyber security perspective we got to get you off the network asap a scenario where there's a least likelihood for emotional fallout uh, or for pushback to occur so i think it's really designed to help support leadership and management uh, to make it easier for them to do these types of layoffs as more and more virtual layoffs dominate lines, there's a debate raging online over layoff etiquette. In April, McDonald's temporarily shut its corporate office and fired hundreds of employees virtually. Frankly, I think McDonald's is teaching a masterclass in layoffs. They broadcasted back in January that they were coming. People were able to prepare. Now April has come and they're letting people know in the comfort of their own home, they're able to maintain confidentiality. They don't have to walk their stuff out down the hallway and be escorted out. If I were getting laid off, I'd want to be laid off at home, not at the office. I think it's lazy leadership. You know, we're talking about thousands of people's lives that have been turned upside down. And it's one of the most, you know, impactful moments in somebody's career to be let go or to be laid off. And it lacks humanity and it lacks uh, an ethical and a moral component. When you work for a big tech company, you had this assurance that you were going to be okay, that you were part of this greater thing, that you were part of this culture that really meant something. That you we just talked about that, right? He fell for the okie doke. You are a resource. Just because you got the massage, just because you got the perk, just because they were fixing you breakfast and dinner and not charging you. Shout out to B2B. Shout out to my man. Uh, who was up here? Uh, where was he at? Uh, Jerry, if you're still on, my man B2B at the bottom is a data engineer. So if you could go subscribe to him. Uh, or reach or just ping him he can help you with your data analysis uh so he can give you more input on the data analysis he's actually a data engineer he asked me b2b he asked me if uh data analysis was still a good job i told him i thought it was still a good job in 2024 but he should try to be a data engineer work with the pipeline create the pipeline get it cleaned up get it into the right database uh data lake <laughs> and get it uh turned over then two is once that data get clean, you can give it to the AI now, the machine learning, right? To take it to the next level of uh, data analysis, data engineering, that whole data. So um, get with my man, ping my man if you need him. He'll, he'll definitely help you out a little bit with the, with the data analysis. Definitely go subscribe to him. But yeah, once again, I told my man B2B, I don't know if he remembered it because I love him. I told him he had to get out of his feelings, man. People would lay you off and not give a shit about you. He fell for the okie doke, right? He's like, the company loves me. I thought the culture, nah, man, your, your value for what they were doing didn't meet, so you got released, right? That That's it, right? Oh, shout out to my man B2B. He says, that announced engineer is a great career. He actually does that for a living, so... He definitely knows what he's talking about. So let's keep, man. Don't don't be like my man. Don't be no sucker, man. 
Don't let the culture fool you. You were making a difference. And at any moment, snap, you could be axed. Google's extreme cost-cutting measures, which have included 12,000 workers losing their jobs, has translated to big upside moves in its stock. Its CEO, Sundar Pichai, has also done well. He made $226 million in 2022. So they fire you, right? The stock went up, right? <laughs> so, But you're gone, right? So since they're not paying you, right, the value of the company, well, he made $226 million in 2022, right? So we arguing over six figures. We arguing over is the two is the two hundred thousand the new one hundred thousand. These dudes talking about two hundred twenty six million, right? So it happened to me two people. All right, fire facts, man. Let me know if you want to come up, uh, B two B. I'll drop the link. <laughs> PBA was tight. Yeah, shout shout. PBA was right. So yeah, so and I'm I'm gonna talk about when I was laid off, right? But I knew it was coming, so I made some moves. So. Once again, you don't want to be blindsided. Shout out to my man. You want to have your three to six months emergency fund set up, right? You want to have multiple streams of income. So if something happens, like Gabe said, when he got let go, you can easily support your lifestyle, all right? Do you, like I said, stocks, real estate, um, all kind of stuff. Shout out to Carmo Dip. Hey, hey. So once again, you don't want to be uh, set up with, they love me, they'll never let me go. I work for the big tech. Dude, once again, if they're not making your numbers, you're just a resource. Thanks to a $218 million stock award, plus his regular salary and benefits, Pachai is among the highest paid CEOs in the U.S. Hey, good on him. You know, he's got a couple hundred million dollars of bonus and salaries and everything else. Uh, I think the thing that really stings for me is in the letters that came out about the layoffs, uh, the, the communications that came out from Sundar Pichai and other leaders was he's taking full responsibility. And if full responsibility means taking a massive bonus after laying off several thousand people at their company, to me, that's a huge red flag. Google did not respond to CNBC's repeated requests for comment. Companies have been facing mounting criticism over increasing use of virtual layoffs. Onwards HR helps companies in the layoff process. So many organizations roll out the red carpet for those as part of the hiring process, but very few have put any attention to how, how they treat employees when they leave the organization. But right, that is something that needs to be top of mind for organizations because you never know when it's going to be a final goodbye. And it's important to really leave a great last. I'll be like, don't touch me now, nah, but I think she's mistaken. I think since you're just resource, people will cut you. If Google or those if any of those big large corporations, if they're gonna hire you and pay you three hundred thousand, two fifty, most people are gonna take their job. They're not gonna remember the people got laid off. They're not gonna remember how those people got treated. Even if those people tell those people, we always have in our mind, I'm better than that guy, right? I, that's never gonna happen to me. I'm I'm the one, right? So I, what she's saying sounds cool, but no, it's it's just it's just talk. Salute and chat and PBR. Appreciate you, brother Mike. Impression. It is not about the leader, it's about the employees who are being impacted. And the leader must talk about that, spend time acknowledging that difficulty. Instead of uh, questioning, is it dignified to do it virtual or in person, we should think of better ways of. If it's going to be virtual, how we can do it in a dignified way for workers and how workers can prepare themselves to deal with situations like that. If you look closely at the current job market, you might scratch your head. On the one hand, mass tech layoffs continue dominating headlines, and on the other hand, the labor market still seems strong. In April, the U.S. economy added 253,000 jobs, and unemployment dropped to 3.4 percent, tied for the lowest level since 1969. The jobs market is incredibly fragmented. And what that meant is that large firms, especially large firms tied to tech, hired aggressively during the pandemic. And now they're right sizing that hiring as people uh, rely less on the tech sector. They're doing more things related to goods and services uh, and, and getting out there in terms of leisure and hospitality. And so you're seeing some big firms uh, with big headlines, but that is not yet translating into the overall labor market. 
And in particular, we've seen layoffs at companies like Invid Tech because those are sectors that have hired enormously during the pandemic and maybe misread some of the pandemic era trends. As I want to chime in on that. I don't think they misread anything. I think, and I, I actually did a couple of videos, those big companies were hoarding talent because they thought they might need it, right? Amazon prints money with AWS. So they were hoarding talent. They didn't misread it. They said, I got this talent and I don't want other companies to get the talent in case I need it. They knew this day was going to come, right? These guys are Harvard trained, MBA trained. They got economists. They they use economist firms to help them predict. And everybody knows, if you look back through history, there's always been an ebb and flow. There's always kind of been like a recession, how deep it is. So I don't think they misread anything, right? Because you're never going to um, pinpoint how many people you need or how many resources. So they said, we just going to scoop as much talent as we can. We're going to keep, because you've seen a lot of people on um, uh, Snapchat and uh, what you call them saying, I'm not really working, right? AWS people were like, yeah, I work two or three hours a day because they overhired. They knew that, right? Because they didn't want that talent going to Google or Snapchat or X. So they just overhired it on purpose, right? So them saying they misread it, I, I don't believe that. long-term uh, structural shifts and it turns out that those were more temporary so because of the potential recession on the horizon we're seeing a lot of companies that have to reevaluate and unfortunately some are deciding that they need to lay off workers to get into a more sustainable place unfortunately virtual layoffs are here to stay and what companies can do to improve this process is to actually bring a human-centered approach that cares about the person behind the screen. And so I think companies are opting for using Zoom or virtual mechanisms over in-person mechanisms, primarily due to working from home and the culture of working from home that has uh, really permeated itself across most major corporations in the United States today. So with this new reality of just being cut off and laid off by any company, I think what I've learned, and I think what people need to do really be invested in yourself yeah. be invested in what you do really really well right. and don't invest in the culture it sounds counterintuitive but just do the bare minimum when it comes to actually investing in the company but invest in yourself because really at the end of the day it's only you that you can rely on facts get out your feelings player you late but i think you really need to do both right i think you can invest in yourself as you because as you invest in yourself you can help out the company right more right so there there's a balance to that but once again you need to understand your resource and and how you play into the company all right then it's gone a little bit more than i'm gonna talk about kind of when i got laid off the mid-level size company i worked at and it just kind of how that played out right? so we can talk about warning signs what you need to do and what you need to look for and what you need to ask these companies So that's the end of that. Let's see, I like that graphic at the front. That's my man, that's how you be looking when you get fired, man. You be looking perplexed. Like, what happened? I got fired. Well, hey, were you laid off, right? So let, let's kind of, let's go through and check everybody. Yep, trucking companies are the same way. Hey, big brother, what's up, Ty? Not working either. facts, facts, but you gotta make sure you facts. They were getting all the benefits. Try keep our facts, man. They were doing the most, man. They were doing the most. Just send the service package. Don't care who delivered the news. I'm gonna go on vacation the same week and plot the next move. Facts, facts, facts. And two is, you know, we talked about that. Make sure your emergency fund. Make sure you get a severance package, right? A lot of people. I got a small severance package when I left. Most. Most small to mid-sized company, you, your service package is, is tiny, right? I mean, I, like if you work for one of the big companies, you get a service, but most mid to small, small companies, your service package is going to be tiny, tiny. Man. So um, should have quiet quit. Fact, that's what he's saying. If you listen to him, he said do the bare minimum, right? So now he's talking about quiet quitting. No, you're right. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm completely out of my feelings this year. I almost broke me. Yeah, facts, man. You got to be careful, man. So, two, let's let's kind of roll it back. Shout out to my man, Struggle Security, for coming up. 
once again, he works at the big consulting firm. So um, this year, once again, I was working at a large state agency. I was cool with the CIO, right? So he came to me, he just told me, PBO, your bill rate's too high. I was, I don't know, I think I was the second highest paid person from a consultant standpoint. So he said, I'm not renewing you in a year, which is perfect. I got a year now to start figuring it out, figuring out the moves I'm going to make, right? I knew I was going to get some bench time. So kind of my last month, I started interviewing. Last two months, I started interviewing. I started sending out uh, resumes. I started making connections. I came to the realization I was going into the office, right? I wanted a remote job. So then when my, I appreciate you, Carmel Dip. So then the other part about that too is um, I had my emergency fund pretty dear. So I know I was going to get some bench time. I thought I was going to get three or four months. So so as soon as I'm, two is I want to get AWS certified. I'm like, okay, I need to make sure my cloud skills are up there. I need to focus on the cloud. PBO's next big move, I got to get my cloud cert. So I got, I think I got four cloud certs. I made some connections. Then this, uh, I was on a bench for seven months. By the eighth month, I had about two or three job opportunities coming up. So I, I was trying to figure out which one I'm going to pick. So when they called me in, my boss called me in, you know you're in trouble when you come into the Zoom or Teams and HR is in there. I was like, oh, this is going to be a bad day for PBO. HR is in there. But two is, like I said, I was presently surprised like my man there. I got seven months on a bench meeting. I wasn't doing jack but studying for AWS, right? I And two is I did a few smaller jobs on uh, Upworks, right? I was freelancing a little bit. I did a couple of risk assessments for some smaller companies. So like Gary said, I was making some money on the side while I was on the bench, right? Because I was like, okay, I can do this. I got my AWS search. Then by the time they, as soon as they fired me, I think I had a job two weeks right after that, right? So it all kind of lined it up. So, oh, shout out to Tam. I always stay ready. Go check out Women in Linux. Definitely one of the top uh, YouTube channels in there. I'll go check out too. Check out my man AI and me in here. Check out Before the Billions. Those are definitely some people I rock with. That's up in there. Check out my man Tech RX. But now, shout out to Tam. Like she said, she got him. And two, she had me thinking differently. Like uh, once again, I got that AWS interview. I was trying to get the three hundred thousand dollar job. Shout out to uh, uh, Tech RX about that too. So I went for the the big family. Maybe I'm glad I didn't get it because they started laying off at the end. But once again, I got in the uh, queue. Um, I need a little more engineering background. I'm more compliance. Somehow I got moved from compliance to engineering. I don't know how that happened. They were hiring so many people. Their hiring process was a little janky. But once again, I, I got in there. Oh, put your uh, drop your channel in there. Are you uh, you a mod? Let me see. You Are you a mod in there, Tim? Drop your channel in there. I thought I made you a mod. I need to go check work on my mod. Let me see. Let me know if you're a mod. Uh, we will have... Oh, check him out. Yeah, I like I liked him. He asked me, had me... Um, he was talking about high performance computing. Yeah, drop your drop your channel in there. Um, yeah, shout out to him. He's definitely good. Go check my man out, Kelsey Hightower. He's definitely on top of his game. I actually enjoyed the last one. What time are you coming on? I'll probably come through. Check that out. I'm studying for my CISP, but I, I might make a little time for that one, Tam. He's good, definitely on there. Good. So I definitely got to come in there, pay my tech ties when I come through. But yeah, go check her out. Um, what time is it, Tam? I guess I could click on it and see what time. We usually come on. So, but once again, too, is the other thing you got to have a lot of federal contracts now. Even though it's five year, it's renewable every year, meaning if they don't like you, <laughs> they could kill your contract. Term uh, Termination for convenience, meaning at the end of the one year contract, even though it's a five year. The thing somebody did to me was kind of... Um, I would call it underhandedly, but I should have checked. They hired me with three months left on a five-year contract, right? I got lucky because they got renewed, right? So check, check around 8 p.m., so about an hour. We're going to roll over to town, so I'll be wrapping up in a minute. PBO tired. But, you know, so we're going to definitely go check check uh, Women in Linux. You've seen the link. Go check go check them out. Kelsey Hightower is a great interview. Like I said, I, I see him out here. Definitely an all-star guy on a, on a no, different level. 
especially a high, much higher level. But so yeah, definitely check them out. So two is you need to ask them, especially on a federal contract, is when is your contract over? When is your contract in? How are you doing in a contract? Right, it's renewable every year. Right, how much bench time do you give your regular employees? Right, those are questions you need to ask consulting companies when they hire you. Right, the bigger the company, right, the bigger the bench time. The smaller the company, usually the smaller the bench time, right? So that's kind of the thing you need to. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. He's definitely uh, straight. Nah, he retired from Google. Yeah, he definitely on a different plan. So once again, from uh, layoffs, two and a lot of times two is when you're around a contract, especially a bigger contract, people start whispering. Some of the execs that are uh, practice managers, they know those contracts are coming to an end, right? So they're trying to figure out where to put you. And sometimes they start leaving, going to other contracts. That's why you're like, okay, why is the practice manager used to be here every week? It's not here, right? So those are some of the signs you can pick up and figure out kind of what's going on so you won't be in the virtual layoff. So you won't be in a virtual layoff looking, 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 looking weird. Like my man, he was upset. So you won't be surprised like him. So I'm going to stay a little longer, see if you have any questions. But once again, I just thought uh, virtual layoffs was good. Just kind of talking about it. Um, just so you don't get surprised. Just so you know you're a resource, right? Just so you know um, this is not a popularity context. They don't like you. If their numbers don't meet, somebody's going to get laid off, right? Oh, facts. We see when people start jumping ship, you should have had your info out there. Facts, facts. Like you said, you should always be ready. You don't have to get ready because you're always ready, right? So you want to definitely make sure you know you know what you're doing in that. So, so that's it. I dropped the link if anybody want to come up. Oh, facts. I was talking about getting my cloud skills up for the next 10. Facts, facts. I'm trying to get my cloud up and my DevSecOps. So working on my, your favorite word, working on my multi-cloud. If you could come up, you don't have to, if you don't have to cam up, uh, Tim, if you don't want to, you know, I ain't going to never make you do nothing. <laughs> so shout out to you. If you want to, Tim, no rush. I know you about to, you know, get your own thing going on. So if you don't want to come up, it's all good. But like you said, what, what, what is your next skills? And we're going to, do that. I'm gonna get the tech Avengers. I probably get with Tam is what's your goal for 2024, right? So my AWS is getting up there. Tam's favorite thing that I'm super late on is I gotta get my Kubernetes and Docker's up, right? I gotta get my container skills up. Even, even though I can audit them from an insurance thing, I I want to know that I'm almost a, a an architect in those two technologies, and I'm late to the game, right? So my 2024 is gonna be hopefully get my CISP which I said I was going to do in 2023. That's the goal I didn't make and work on my uh, Kubernetes and my Docker, my container skills, so I'm comfortable in that arena, right? I'm I'm not as comfortable as, because I like to be a senior uh, compliance, facts, facts, like she said, container phase money. So that's going to be the thing I'm working on. I'm close, so on AWS, I'm doing a standard EC2. I moved over to, to serverless, right? So I'm getting comfortable in the serverless, the lambdas, getting comfortable that the next thing is container right so i want to make sure those things stack on each other in the aws uh ecosystem of the lower things to get comfortable with then the next thing is container containerization and part of that is is i believe docker kubernetes shout out to tim she talked about redshift and some of the other ones so so those are the skills PBOs are going to work on in 2024 and some of the skills, like we said. So what are, what are, what are your goals for 2024? Mine is probably uh, get container certification in something and just kind of really master that and get comfortable, especially from a security perspective. How do you, you know, do those nodes? How do you, at Fargate too, they have containers that are, are, that are controlled by AWS or Azure, right? So how do you do that versus you spinning up your own seat? EC2 with your own task, right? So there's a, or you just run bare metal with Docker and Kubernetes on it. So I want to be be comfortable in all three of those, right? So I'm trying to 
max max my uh security dollars and my security knowledge so i can get paid right so that's kind of what pbo and you're going to see videos on that i learn i got a ton of aws as i learn and i'm and i'm getting a little better so that's definitely what pbo is kind of kind of focusing on in 2024 we're going to talk about goals i'm looking at side gear paying 129 for two years working with the up up and shift right so so once again i'm trying to get my skills up so i'm comfortable in the, in the in the container world container conversations even right so at a high level i understand them but once again i need to dig in there and you know get a lot better at it like anything in there let's see when, when you work for it when you worked in the federal area do you ever felt like oh yeah most definitely because two is when you're in a federal area type um i was consulting and as a consultant you always feel like a number right because number one is there's a whole bunch of consultants and they're always talking they are they always meeting um you as a consultant you're training the government staff right so they're always talking about what's your number what's your value what you need to do to be successful so tied at, at a high level um once again because i've always been a consultant probably since the last two years when i switched over when i got laid off i you know picked up a private sector job so but now i always feel like a, a, especially as a, a high dollar consultant type, you always feel like a, for me i always felt like a number which wasn't a bad thing for me um let it keeps everything in perspective i like i tell b2b i'm not getting in my feelings so i, I know where i stand out shout out to excel pro salute he's always uh commenting commenting on my videos and giving me support so i always appreciate when, when he comes through salute salute but now ty so now like i said it's not a bad thing for me and like i said i've done it for shit, 25 years <laughs> so for me being a consultant in that number i knew what that number is i respect it too it helps me keep my toes on like tim said when should i jump when should i not jump where do i stack you know when you start seeing i've been in projects where consultants was getting laid off the client told me they like me i should stay no nah, i don't trust you i'm getting out of here right so um that's where you know where your number is at because they theoretically when you're on a on assignment the client ranks you really of who they believe is most valuable so you need to understand that so if you got a 10 so if you got 100 consultants and you 95 when they start laying off you're gonna get laid off now if you're in the top 10 they might lay off and get two two years before they get to you right when i was at the state that's how it was we had like 30 consultants or something in the agency i made it down to the last two and they offered me a job state just doesn't pay well compared to private sector so i decided to uh, once again leap, leap in the private sector and um check that out but two is you need to understand what's going on around you hopefully the client respects you enough like i said my last client he told me at the beginning of the year once once the ending of this year he wasn't going to renew my contract cool thing is once again he told me that a year up front so i can look the other thing is he offered me a job it just wasn't at the dollar amount that um pbo was comfortable with right once again i've been in this game for a long time uh, for a state salary though it, it was it was great i mean i looked at because uh state salaries are um transparent you can usually find a state website that shows every what everybody in the state makes which i think is crazy so i looked it up in my agency i probably would have been in the top 10 out of a thousand people uh yep i'd have probably been in the top that take the back top 15 out of a thousand people right but still from a state perspective living that uh that consultant money right so cool thing though states um uh, safer in two after 10 years you will have a pension so i was kind of weighing weighing that i'm like dude i'm 56 i probably need 10 years i could get a small pension if i take less pay long story short and then i'm gonna have gabe and everybody take, i own some real estate and i just got a little overextended so i was like i can't take no pay cut i gotta get this real estate under control right so that's what we jump in there oh shout out to tam how you doing shout out to tam i'm um, also i'm 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 rushing to get ready but i said i i wasn't gonna leave you leave you up here by yourself nah, okay just left me i know you're a busy woman how are you doing i'm also i'm also that's cool. so your um your conversation about when to jump okay so let's let's talk about it real quick i'm gonna give mm -hmm. you my my scenarios and how i handle these things federal wise um i'm always i don't want to say one foot out but i guess you could say that 
if you want mm-hmm, to. Mm-hmm. But I'm always looking, right? right? Um, I'm always looking not just to see what the opportunities are out there, but to see what the market, how the market is moving. Is you know, am I, you know, if my inbox is not getting, you know, 10 emails a day for jobs, then it's all right, something going on in the market. People are shifting away from something. What's going on with it, right? So what's going on with your resume? What's going on with your skill set? Where's the market being driven to? Um, where's the money going? So I'm always looking at where VCs are investing their money. And if you're talking about being in the private sector, if you're talking about being in the public sector, meaning federal side, where's the government have interest? What projects are coming up? Who are winning these contracts? Um, Also, what recruiters are really actively responding? Like, so if you're on LinkedIn and you see a recruiter constantly posting, just DM that that person. Hit them up, DM, DM that person. Be like, hey, here's my situation. I'm looking for these things. And the reason why I say that is because they're looking for people just like you're looking for work. So instead of them, instead of waiting for someone, be proactive about it, but be strategic. And when I say be strategic, I did a show on this. So it's episode uh, 124 where I talked about how to become a W-2 multimillionaire. And I talked about it because um, I talked about it because a lot of us go after these jobs and like, okay, yeah, they got 3% match, 4% match, 6% match. That's cute. But go after the jobs that got, regardless of what you do, they put in 5%, 10%, 25% into your 401k. And why do I say that? I say that because in those particular companies, you're getting money while you're working that's going into your 401k that can ramp up for you and start working versus in the other companies you're getting a match or you may have to wait three months before you get vested or, or what have you. We just got to learn how to be strategic and we don't do a good job of being strategic about it. Um, The other piece is when we're talking about, Hey, I, I want to be a part of, you know, this federal ecosystem you got to understand in in the federal ecosystem the two or I should say three the three people that play that pay and pay well the department of defense right. DOE and the air force right. followed by the navy is the last one so if you're not looking at the department of energy the department of defense and in particular in the intel community and and navy and Air Force, you're doing it all wrong. Army contracts don't pay anything. They on the low. They on the low end of the totem pole. Air Force sets the tone, so they're always doing research and development for the Air Force. Um, there's always money going or that's coming out of the Air Force, and there's always money coming out of DOD and the Department of Energy. Now, the Department of Energy got a hundred billion dollars to spend by 2025. So if you're not looking out under the Department of Energy and you got your clearance or you're trying to get a clearance, that's what you should be looking at. If you're not looking under the Air Force and, and DOD, then <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And some of them do require a four year degree and some of them don't. You just have to it's, it's, it's going to have to be the luck of the draw on some of those. Now, the other thing is, if you're going in the, in the public sector. You could go work for companies that do work with the Department of Defense or with the Department of Energy that don't require right. clearances because all the work is unclassified. They just need somebody to come in and do the work. So you have to look at what what those companies are. So the easiest way to find out what those companies are is me personally, what I do is I look at what technology that I want to work on. And then I look up companies that work with that technology. So if I know I want to be working with Azure or if I want to, if I want to work with uh, AWS, I go specifically look for companies that have that. How can you find that? So on LinkedIn and, and what people don't realize is 
these government conferences. When you find these government conferences, they have sponsors. Those sponsors are looking for people to come work for them. And they're always recruiting. So that's another way to look at stuff. We just got to be proactive on that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't do DHS. <laughs> I saw that too. I get to uh, Rhonda says, stay away from DHS. I just left the to your contract. Stay away from anything contract related to TSA. Yeah, yeah I'll, shout I'll, to TSA. Yeah, I'll do that now. Nah, I'm with you. I just did DOD. I was lucky. I just kind of fell into on a humble, and it just treated me super well. Like I said, I got 11 year run. Once again, they offered me a job. I just could have made. Uh, DOD offer me a job, but they just pay their consults more than what they pay. Like, I think I'd have been a 13 uh, on, on the contractor band, which I think goes from 80 to 120. Mm -hmm. But you can make more money as a consultant, though. So why would I work for the DOD? I mean, so. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see something. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I got it right here. So You want me to share it? Uh, you going to share it? Yeah, hold on real quick. Yeah, if I think okay. I got share permissions. Hold on. Yeah, you can share it. I just got to activate it once you share it. I'll deactivate okay. what I got. Up. Okay. So once you put in there, I, I can activate it. All right. And then after this, I'll, I got to run. That's why I'll come over and join you later. All right, hold on. I, I try to send all my people to you. <laughs> so I'll be good. All right. So there, there I see it. Okay. Let me change it. Boom. All right. So, there yeah, there you go. So, all right. So when I talk about this, I did, no, you know. I did this on my show. All right. When mm -hmm. I talk about the companies that do 25% to your 401k, I'm saying this, you get a baseline salary of $140,000, right? Mm -hmm. Then because they put 25% into your 401k, they automatically put that $35,000 in there. Now, some of the companies are set up a little different where they'll pay down here on lines 12 and 13. They'll pay for your um they'll pay for your vision dental and medical mm -hmm. so basically you'll get this thirty five thousand dollars down here so what ends up happening is is this thirty five thousand dollars goes towards your in this case your insurance and your pto but what happens is if you still have some money left here say beginning of january or october depending on the company they'll pay this out back to you so in other words, you could get, say, let's take 35,000, multiply that by 0.7, you'll get roughly around about what, 20, $25,000 coming back to you, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, when you see, there are companies that I've been putting, out, uh, been, been putting out here about this, but what I'm trying to show you is at the, at the end of the day, they're putting in 35000 regardless of what you do. Now, let's say right now it's 23000 for you to max out your 401k. So between the employee and the employer, it's 23000 plus the 35000 You can't go above 69000 right now. I think it's 69 or maybe 73, but I think it's 69. So 23 and and 35 is uh, what, 58? So, 58. so in the first in your first year, you can have fifty eight thousand in your four hundred one k, right? So that's why I say being strategic about the companies that you go work for is another thing to add into that, right? And this is not a match. This is not a twenty five percent match. This is, hey, I went to sleep, and they're gonna drop this money into my account every month, right? And so now. Let's say you did work for that company for three years. Let's say after three years, you got what? what this, what's that? Six, let's do 60 times three. That's 180,000 minimum that's in there. I'm not even playing the stock market with it, right? But you can, but I'm just saying you got a minimum of 180,000. You get laid off, right? At least you have a nest egg of 180,000 that you can at least pull from. Mm -hmm. Or you got 180000 that could still work for you. Or, and this is where people uh, fail to realize, too, you still got this money that you got over here that get kicked out every year from, from this that you could put up for an emergency fund. No, that's true. So I, I hope everybody followed what I was saying about 
that because that's that right there is the key and let me let me pull up my calculator here uh, so we could look at this so uh let's do 35,000 uh, times 0.7 that's 24.5 multiply that by three years so in three years you can have like 74,000 sitting off to the side so if you get laid off, boom, you got 74,000 sitting off to the side. Now, that depends on how you do this PTO down here, the insurance and the structure of the company when it comes to your benefits. The companies that out here that do that, do that um, Zeta, um, Nucleus does it. Bits just stop theirs. Um, there's another company, I think it's called I ICR. B-Cube does it. Um, and I think it's four more, but I have the list that I've been collecting on who does that and how they do it and how they structure everything. So I just wanted to put that out there as you start looking for companies, look for companies that automatically do things for you. Um, the match is cool, but you could do so much more. Um, the next one is, um, looking for companies that also give you employee on stock, right? Yeah. Uh, incentive, you can do employee on stock, ES, ESPP and ISOs, incentive, I think it's incentive stock options or something like that. I think that's what they are. So that way when the company basically goes, gets sold to someone else or, or whatever, you'll get it for the price in which you were were brought in under for say you came in your employee number 45 the stock price for the for the company maybe two dollars and 63 cents or something like that when you get sold you got sold at um twenty dollars a share or fifteen dollars a share so now you know it's cheaper for you to buy but when you get sold you get more money back that's really what that is for. So you want to look yeah. for companies that have that structure as well too and negotiate that as well too. So, and this is all on the federal side. This is not like, um, this is not like, hey, I'll go work at Google or something like that. You can do that at Google too, but I'm just saying on the federal side, there are companies that do that as well too. That's good info, man. That's all I had. <laughs> okay i appreciate you i know you are busy that's a lot once again go check out women in linux she got different membership levels so you want to definitely check out there obviously she got some great information she she shared with my channel dropping you a few gems so you can go on over there and check her out yeah and like i said that's i see the comment uh about the department of navy um this is one thing i didn't realize uh that you can do and this is something that uh Tanika ask you, this is what she did. She was working in the public sector. They asked her to come over and work on a on the GS schedule. Whatever mm -hmm. she was getting paid on the public sector side, she went in. They they accept they could they rolled that into the GS schedule. So if she's getting she was getting paid 500 outside, she getting paid 500 inside the GS schedule. So you could roll your actual salary over into the actual in, into an actual GS level job. So I know most of the GS on OPM, I see they max out at like 183 or something yeah, like that. They wouldn't let they wouldn't let me roll mine in, but you know, obviously you can negotiate that. Right. So here's the here's the other part too is negotiating that and negotiating your time off and your sign on bonus. And I think that's really comes down to like who is who is leading the way, right? Who's on those projects? And how much and how much value add that you're gonna add to those projects? I think that's I think that's the gift to gab and, and, and as well too, because sometimes a lot of these projects, a lot of these positions sit open for six months to a year, and they don't have anybody to come fill those positions. Spikes, spikes. And so they're always looking for someone to come fill those positions. But in order to fill them, they also have to pay. So the I I remember when I moved from Texas to 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 dc the position that i took over had been empty for a year and so when they made the offer to me i wasn't happy the guy was like you didn't see me happy i was like yeah because i was like for the position to be open for a year 
and the way that I responded to, like I had a take home, the way I responded to everything, I was like, I was like, why didn't I say I should have got more? And so I ended up getting on the phone with the manager um, that actually, you know, that was cutting the offer. And she was like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see where you're coming from with that. And so they went ahead and gave me $20,000 more. And so to me, I think the negotiating part is something that we got to get better at. But knowing what to negotiate for is the important piece. I think we miss out on that. No, 100%. Yeah. Because I really just started doing that probably like the next last 10 years of my life. The first 20, I, didn't, I, I negotiated a little, but I think I was left leaving a little on the table. So I'm still trying to get a little better at that myself. So. Yep. Yeah. And that's a and that's a hard pill to swallow because um, oftentimes in the negotiating, people get nervous. Um, right. They get told no. And they're like, OK, well, what right. do I do next? You know, like, hey, well, you know, can you meet me halfway? You know, it's always, you know, the onesie twosie, right? But anything, yeah. anything, um, anything to help out with will help you there. Um, I see the the thought on working working for the reserve. You mean the like the Navy reserves? Let me see that. Let me. I'm behind. I'm trying to stay. Uh, there, that's the name there. Mm, no, it's one after that. Okay, after that, no, that's big, bro. That's me. Keep going. On. Oh, there. I, I, I never thought about working for the reserves. What's your thoughts on that? I don't, I don't have many. I don't know. I'm DOD. Yeah, if you're going to, I mean, I would say go be a Space Force Guardian if that's the case. Right, uh, but <laughs> I think he means federal, he meant federal reserve. Oh, federal okay. Reserve. Okay, I, I've never. I actually interviewed for a security job, but I don't. I like I said, I'm a DOD guy, so I, I, I ain't going to even. Yeah, talk I, about I, that. what's your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I say DOD, um, DOD, like I say, DOD, Air Force, um, Navy. It's the next one. Those are the. I stay in those circles because they're the yeah. ones that got them. They, they're the ones that got the money. And they got and and they set the tone. Facts, yeah. Like I so said, I just got lucky on the DOD, and they were spending. We spent a crazy amount of ten years. I think the project I was on, we had six hundred programmers. We, I think, they ended up spending eight hundred million dollars over ten years for the project I was on. Let's see. So, oh no, who, who does the Federal Reserve fall under? Shit, I don't know. I have to Google that. What's your thoughts on the NSA? I don't. I don't know. My ex boss worked for the NSA. I. I, I don't think they pay well, but what what happens is is if you work for the NSA, NSA and you put that on your resume, I think you can get the cashier work for the NSA like I do for DOD. But I don't think they pay off the bat. What's your thoughts? Mm, no, they, on no, they guessing. don't pay off the bat. Like you just get no. So let's 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 really talk about it. So they follow the GS schedule on the OPM, so you can go look up those salaries. However, you could be a contractor. The contractors get paid more. So you have to ask yourself what what's what's beneficial to you. Being a contractor for some projects that they have or being or working directly with them. Do you get some benefits for working directly with them? Sure you do. But um if you're looking to get a money grab, I go for the money first and then roll over right. later on and say, okay, well, I'll work directly for you. Yeah, that's my thing. Once I get a little bit more, set, my because I think I'm gonna work from probably sixty-seven to seventy-seven. I probably go in and work my last ten years and give me a good desk job. But you right, because that's why I was. I was at DOD. They offered me a job. They were offering me a GS thirteen, but I was just making so much money as a contractor. It didn't make sense when you looked at that GS schedule to compare to what I was making as a consultant. Yeah, level one, close. level two, level three. Once you start getting into it, you be like. Mm. Yeah. Cut me my chance. Yeah, because yeah, like she said, each GS schedule has at least, I think it's 10 levels in each one. So you could be a 13-7 and make more than a 14-1, right? But 14-1, mm-hmm. I, I, I top out at a higher. And sometimes it's hard to sell to go from a 13 to a 14. Right. Because you talk talking about being a director and management people. So I, I never thought I could be a 14. So I was like, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going out. To the private sector like i said i got offered i think a 13 5 13 step 5 i think what they used to call it mm-hmm. back then so 
But now, nah, like you said, I made, I made more money as a consultant, so it didn't make sense. Man. Right. And then my um, and then my my last little thing I'll leave with is this: if you don't want to do any of those things, find a skill that you're really really good at and become a consultant. But if you don't want to work for somebody, you gonna always work for somebody. I don't care how you slice facts. it, but facts, facts. become a consultant and go go down the route of being a consultant. But know mm -hmm. that you know, hey, if you do container security really well and you know that you do lambda or you know that you do serverless or you know that you do cloud security really really well you can contract yourself and be and, and cut out the middleman and be a consultant but now you right. got to put now you got to go get insurance and all these other things right. but you can right. go down that route it's not that it's not possible it's just some people just hmm. don't like going down that route I did. It. I don't know if you was here when I, cause I did it. I 1099. I didn't uh, negotiate right. Mm -hmm. And as you know, your business pay part of your taxes, and you pay part. I didn't know that my tax bill at the end of the year, cause I was getting paid was forty four thousand. I almost blacked out. I was like, oh shit, I know the IRS forty four thousand. The other cool thing is one, the IRS will let you get on a payment plan. Shout out to the IRS. So you get like you said, you gotta man know what you're doing, manage it, set up your structure correctly too. So right, but. I got paid. PBO was making it rain. He was much younger and thinner back then. <laughs> Shout out to me, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, <laughs> uh, my, my here's my thing. Like, uh, no matter what we're doing, no matter where we're going, what are, uh, what are we, you know, what are we pushing forward for? I just want us to understand that the money is out there as well. And it's also to understand that you don't have to be the only person in the room. And that was right. one of the reasons why I started Women in Linux because I was the, always the only person in the room. I'm still the only person in the room. And when I say that, the person right. of color, person of color that's female in the room. Right. I, I, the right. rooms I'm in, I'm sitting down there like, oh, this contract is going to be a hundred million. We're going to sole source this to you. We're going to get this, uh, give you all this IDIQ. And now I got to go find people to come do work. And I can't find people to do the work. Because one, we don't either we don't have the skill set or we don't want to do the work, or we're like, well, how long is it gonna take you? Man, it's gonna take you some time. You gotta put in time. And either right. way it go, if you don't want to put in time, somebody else gonna put in time. You're gonna put in time one way or the other. Right. You better put in time and get you some skills so you get paid. You're gonna put in time and be broke. You gotta pick which crap which time you're gonna pick because you're gonna put time in. Right. So so you know, I just want us to be in 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 position to right. take advantage of whatever opportunity comes away. If you're really good at bash scripting and they need somebody to come over there and write some bash scripts, then be good at bash scripting. If you're good at Python, be good at Python. But be good right. at something so you can always continue to make money. And that's why I always preach about having skill sets for the next 10 to 20 years, fundamentals. Right. I'll last you the next 10 to 20 years. You can always add, but you, you know what I'm saying? Nobody can never take away the skills that you have. You can always add to them. But when you don't have them, people will always overlook you. So you get as much right. as many skills as you can for free while this while this, all this stuff is free. We never seen this this type of stuff being free as we have right now. Like right. like the stuff that's free right now, that like with Amazon, um, mm -hmm. Um, Amazon, the whole thing with uh security and AI and all these initiatives, yeah. a lot of the stuff is free. So you can Fine. you could be the 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 expert in the field within really three years, but you but and in them Fine. three years, you just keep taking jobs that increase your your presence and increase your value and so forth. So that's what I'm running with. I gotta run, I gotta get I gotta let people in Appreciate in the back. You. Um, I appreciate you. You're welcome, man. Like, come by, stop by. If y'all don't know who Kelsey Hightower is, go look up Kelsey Hightower. He retired. Oh, from, he, he yeah, he retired for Google. I kicked it with him at, at KubeCon. We got some things that we're working on. Um, so I'm not. We just we're not just talking. But I I, I be want I I want our people to listen to people that who's retired. I think Kelsey is 42. He retired from Google. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're talking about sitting on cap tables. Uh, being a part of startups from the beginning, 
Um, we're talking about just just overall the experience of your tech career and what it could look like and and where you can be versus where you all hear stuff like and it's, it's funny because I talked about this and I probably say it on the show too. When we start talking, when people start promoting stuff, there's like, hey, the first initiative was we need more coders. And then it went from we need more coders to we need more people in cybersecurity. Now it's need, we need people with AI. And we're always right. reactive. We're not ahead of the curve. So we don't get the chance to be sitting at the table with open AI and their engineers are getting paid 800000 to $10 million. Because some of those engineers were getting poached to come from Google or to come from or to come from wherever they were to come work at OpenAI at 10 million. And me and Kelsey were talking about that. We were like, man, that's a norm. Like, like we we don't wow. see packages like that where where wow. we're five million, 10 million, one million, two million. What's wrong with us having packages like that? What's wrong with us getting money like that? Why would why would we be scared of that? And when I sit there and I talk to people, they're like, "Well, I don't know, apply for those jobs because I don't think I had the skill set." Well, okay, well, what what's stopping you from getting the skill set? How how can we help you get better so you can have that option, right? Well, you can at least at least get the interview, and that's where I want us to get to. We can get the interview, we can get hired, we can start working, and we can start bringing in other people. But if we're gonna bring in anybody else, we want you to have the skills too. Hell, I work to get them. Why you ain't working to get them, right? You know, like let's work to get the skill set. So there's the answer is never no. The answer is when can you start? That's a good point. That's a good point. All right. All right. I'll catch y'all on the show. Uh I appreciate, I appreciate you. you for letting oh. me come up here and, uh, all the time, anytime. And run anytime. my mouth. <laughs> all good all good you'll see me over there so i'm about to wrap up in a minute i appreciate you thanks for coming through you're welcome everybody everybody go check out she dropped it in the chat go check out women in linux obviously she giving out great info so let me read the what's in the chat when you worked at the state don't they force you to put a large amount no they don't force you axel foley 317 my hometown no when i was there they didn't um long story short um you can put certain amount in their rights. Remember, most states old school, they got a defined pension. So as long as you work your 10 years, they take part of your salary to calculation, and that'll be your pension. You get 40% at 10 years, and if you stay 20, you get a different amount, right? So a lot of younger people stay for 10, then they're jet, right? They get their experience, then they then they get their pension, their 10-year pension, then they're a jet, so... Then you could go somewhere and work another 20 years. I know people with two and three pensions because um, uh, they worked, they went to the army at an early age, did 20. They did 20 in business. Then they came to a state and did 10. So, right, because most people are going to end up working 40 and 50 years in the spot. The two is once you do um, army, that counts towards your federal job and your state job. So you don't need as many years to get the benefits because that's kind of like a federal job unto itself. Like I said, I work with a lot of people. I call it triple dip. And so they were doing uh getting multiple pensions. All the recruiters that hit me up just blank me. Yeah, you it's hard. And I agree with you. I just got lucky where I got two or three recruiters I, I trust that kind of did me right. So I always kind of reach out to them if I'm looking. So yeah, you gotta uh hand pick your recruiters that you trust, right? Even though and indeed I I if if I'm looking, I'll put my resume and you really just Half of those jobs, a lot of times, are recruiters. You just don't know it. They recruit for a company. For a company, I'm still locating my niche and finding my work. Yeah, it takes a minute to find that. I just got lucky. Like I said, I was a programmer. Then I fell into DBA, and then since I was at DOD doing DBA work, they just trained me in cybersecurity. So it just kind of all fell into place. All right, just right place at the right time. Now you write a lot of those require a four-year degree. I happen to have one of those, so. Um, so that's why we tell people, even though it's not required, once you get your boot camp and you get employed at a, a company, a lot of times they'll play for your uh, your degree. So I tell people, depending on your family life, take advantage of your company to get your degree. 
let's see, right now, stay away from DHS. I left at the two-year contract, stay away from anything related to TSA. Like I said, I did 10 years at DOD. I, they, it was pretty cool. This is a real thing. I'm a co-op. They contributed a certain percentage, 100% vested day one. Then you can put in and they match those two. Yeah, I got. I work for a Fortune 1000 company. I wasn't even paying attention. Most companies match 3%. And I was taught, it's like, oh, no, we match 6%. I was like, oh, my God, I got to put put the rest of that 3%. I'm leaving free money on the table. So like Axel Foley said and my homie Tim, just uh, reach out and make sure you understand your benefits so you're maximizing those out. So. I was Department of Navy at GSS until they went to the NIC contract, and I have been a contractor since. Which, uh, blah, you did you like the GS schedule better than the contract? Once again, that they offered me a 13, Rhonda, at the Fed. I just got paid more as a contractor. So for me, the contractor life, depending on, like you said, the contract and what you get paid, some are better than others. Like I said, I, I, I which sometimes I'm thinking I should have took that 13. Oh, yeah, she go check her out, Women in Linux. Uh, we we always chopping it up. So I'm always on their channel a lot, so you will see me on, over there a lot. i just been studying for the CISP, so I ain't been over there. It's like, uh, yeah, we was talking about the Federal Reserve. I appreciate that. Yeah, shout out to her. I guess I need to interview Tam more on my channel. I need to work on Yeah, I need to do that too, Ty. I kind of suck at my negotiation. NSA, like I said, I don't think they pay as much because they're on the GS schedule. But once you get that on your resume, you're killing the game. What's good, John? Nice to see you for joining. Shout out to my man, Keep It Techie. I appreciate you. Yep, yeah, thanks to Tam. She always doing it big. Like I said, I'm always on her channel. Skills in a row as well. Oh, yeah, facts. You're doing it right. Get feel your skills. And I always continue as long. Hell, I'll be 56 this year, and I'm still learning, man. I'm, working on my CISP to validate my skills. And once again, 2024 is going to be my container slash Docker, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, shout out to ECS and EKS. That's the version that uh, AWS runs for uh, Docker and Kubernetes, ECS and EKS. So working on that, trying to get a little better. Oh, yeah, facts, man. That, <laughs> I need to get that career. No, facts, if you look out there, they're out there, they're out there. AI. And two is if you look on AWS, they big in the AI. Like I said, I was looking up uh, compliance. They were talking about paying. I interviewed for a three hundred and forty-seven thousand dollar job. It wasn't even an E six for them as a supervisor. It was an E five. It wasn't even a supervisor job. So those dollars are out there. Like I said, I was. They put me. I first was interview, interview interviewing as a supervisor. I didn't. My AWS skills went past. So the guy really liked me. So he wanted me to interview one level down, and it still was like 347. Base was 160, stock options was uh, 80 to 100, and I think my bonus was 67,000. It wasn't even a supervisor job. So that Fang money, which we saw was laying out, they overhired. But if you can get in that Google money, that's on a whole different level, man. That, that Google money. Does she train men? Yeah, it's not. It's, just, it's, just, it's women in Linux, but she's, yeah, she trained men. So shout out to my man, Keep It Techie, Axel. He's got a, a course in uh, Linux. I look, it's great. I'm, I'm going to actually do it. So check out my man, uh, Keep It Techie. He's got his free Linux course out there. That's definitely a primer to get you started, Axel. How long are you going to be up? I was going to call. You want to come up? Let me know. I could drop the link. I can stay on if you want to come up. Talk a little bit about daddy engineering. Yeah, I'll be up. Let me know. I might go. I was going to go to 10, but if you want to come up, I'll hang out. Let me know. PBR, I mean, so I'm uh, B2B. I'll drop the link if you want to come up. I just hit my 40 still grind and have my two years, sir. Shout out to my man. What's up, B2B? Hey, PBO, can you hear me? Yeah, you loud and clear, man. I know you got the professional setup over there, man. You loud and clear, man. I'm glad to hear it, man. I got the the sure mic oh, i got the i got the i got the yeti man is it called the yeti i think i got the yeti man my stuff is my last job they liked me they bought me one i was doing youtube it's, i think it's a 300 hundred dollar mic man i was i was janky up till i got this man it, it helped out my sound immensely i definitely feel you on that because uh if you don't invest in your microphone your sound that's actually the most important part right there 
Facts, man. It took me a while to figure that out. So yeah. And two is I got a little more lighting. Somebody said, Did you get a new camera? I was like, No, I got a I got a couple little circle lights. They helped out immensely. It made my camera look a lot better. I'm like, oh, you had lighting too. That's probably the second thing. Yes, sir. So um about the about the topic about the virtual layoffs. Yeah. So uh I remember you told me ahead of time, like it was like two years ago when you told it me to give me this advice. You said that you just a resource, don't be getting your feelings into it. And uh, I realized, like, yeah, you are completely 100% right. Uh, when it comes to these companies, they're going to be looking at their bottom line. Uh, I agree with your point in, when you said that they overhired during COVID. Um, back when they were talking about quiet quitting, they were talking about um, people actually just leaving their jobs. There was a mass exodus of people just quitting their jobs um, as well during the pandemic. Um, and then a lot of people were just out of work as well. We, a lot of people just had extra money. Um, and then they they wanted their time and stuff like that. They wanted to work from home posi uh, position. So now the companies have given all these other benefits like work from home. And then now they're trying to dial back. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the biggest reasons is because it's expensive to keep on so much talent. Um, in addition to that, tech has is the biggest it's ever been as far as getting jobs because of right. social media like TikTok. So there's a surplus of people in this industry, but not a surplus of people with specialized skills. Facts, facts. So um, I remember I was speaking, so I actually PPO, I know, you, I know you know this, but I actually um, got news that I'm getting laid off as well. And um, the reasoning that they told me, they said that um, it wasn't like a personal thing, right? They just looked at the at the money that they were coming in. They had been planning this for over a year. Uh, so they had held off from doing this. And what happened was they did it in waves. And they looked at um, the projects that people were working on and seeing, does it make sense? Do we need to keep this many people on this particular project? Uh, and then do they have any specialized skills that we actually need for them to stay on? But because you can be at the company for like 10 years, but if you're on a project that's uh, getting defunded, uh, then they will definitely uh, cut the budget and let you go as well. Hold on real quick. I'm going to chime in on that. Usually if you're on a 10 year, you've been there 10 years, your salary is higher too. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to get. It's easy to get a young peep uh, before the billions in the PBO because I'm older. I need more money than you, B2B. So they're going to fire me first, man, unless I got a specialized skill that, that I can do to prove that. So mm -hmm. so now keep going uh, before the billions. So, yeah, all people, middle middle age people get fired, man. I got a little ageism, too. I'm going to talk about that at the end. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Yeah, just about to ask would that be considered ageism because I got a job right out of college. There's, mm -hmm. I can, I'm the oldest I could ever be. If I wanted that particular position in tech, I cannot have any more experience than I already have now. So right. if, you know, compare me to somebody, because I'm in the industry for like five years now, compare, right. compare me to somebody who has like 10 plus years experience. They may have just got out of college the same as me. And then they're mm -hmm. like, OK, well, they're getting paid more than him. Let's keep on the person who's uh, less senior and get rid of the person who's right. more senior. Because the more senior person gonna get the more senior person is getting paid more than two is a lot of times on that too is if you don't keep your skills sharp a lot of times i'm in older technology so when i was coming up you know i was doing client server it was a whole bunch of old dudes still doing mainframe and we were killing mainframe so they were mm -hmm. getting rid of those guys first because people were getting off the mainframe going to client server right so and two is i, I think you hit on something you didn't realize this you got to realize when you're on a dead project, and I'm going to let Keep It Techie come in after before the bit. If you're on a project, you, especially a DOD effect, you can see it winding down. You're like, oh, shit, this mm -hmm. shit about to end. You better start moving. But go ahead, B2B. I'll let you keep oh, going. yeah. I'll go ahead and let Keep It Techie come in. How you doing, man? Go ahead, Keep it Hey, what's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Y'all can hear me? I'm doing Yes, sir. Doing yeah, well. you're crystal clear. You, you like B2B. Y'all got the professional mics, man. <laughs> Shout out to the professional mic. Go ahead, keep it taking. Nah, nah. This is a great topic, man. I'm glad you're covering it, uh, um, PBO. Um, yeah, um, I think I've said this, you know, multiple times. I mean, you shouldn't you shouldn't look at these positions as the end all be all, and um, is is 
long or the days where somebody's working 30 years for a company or organization you know and getting a retirement and pension and all that stuff or whatever i mean yeah you get a pension it rolls over your 401k if you got it you roll over to a different company but long longer those days where you've yeah. been sitting in the company doing the same job for 30 years you know what i'm saying it's all about you know um keeping up with the changes within the corporate environment and moving around as you see you know as you see fit based on uh, your career goals um they, these companies look at you as a as a number at the end of the day right. and you're just a number within they think and and, right. and i was gonna say a story as well like uh one of the companies i worked for i worked uh, i worked as a financial systems analyst and um i was i was essentially a database administrator for their their budgeting and forecasting you know system that they use for all their financials um and i i basically um <clears throat> because they did a close uh like a monthly mm -hmm. close and then mm -hmm. they also do the budgeting and all that stuff for next year and so those reports that i was having that system generate um allowed them to make the decision to lay off my mm -hmm. position so right, it happens right. you know what i'm saying and, oh, and it's sure. it's crazy just to just to see that or or to see the big picture mm -hmm. of that that okay this system that i <laughs> that i'm managing you know was the was putting out the information that they needed to in order for, in order for leadership to make the decision to cut my position mm -hmm. which wasn't the only one it was you know across yeah. the board but it was just crazy to see that and so you should definitely keep skilling up i heard tam talking about this earlier keep right. skilling up uh and then what you said pbo don't get left behind you know what i'm saying these new technologies right. coming out you need to hop on it and learn it and um and become familiar with these new technologies so you can put them on your resume and stay marketable so yeah that's 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 really all i got to say though man yeah it's a great great conversation now let's go and just uh piggyback on what keep me take you said when i worked at the state like i said I, I was cool with the cio i worked with him 10 years ago so he just told me like keep it take you said he said man the state they're cutting our budget down you a contractor i think i was a second third highest pay. He's like i'm not going to renew your contract mm -hmm. i was like that's cool i got a year like you, you you didn't spring it on me two weeks before or two days i seen grown men crying because they got escorted out so he gave me a year which because we had that respect for me to find a new job which i understood i was there for nine and a half years man you don't get contracts that long so i couldn't complain but most people don't have that luxury or get that respect most time they just escort your ass out man mm -hmm. you know a week two weeks later then you, then you know you toast go ahead and chime in on that b2b you want some of that yeah i wanted to uh i wanted to say that is so true because i remember when i first got my like my previous position when i was a contractor then they always say contractors are usually the first to go when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, well, it's recruiters nice. and contractors. Um, nice. But with that, you have, um, I've had the experience where I've never been escorted out per se. I've always mm -hmm. had a heads up. So, yeah. but I would say that it would really be terrible to be told that that day, okay, you had to be let go. And I know some people have been let go um, that particular day. And then it's kind of like, you you know when you go into uh I, I looked this up as far as negotiating severance packages right um and then that's a good way for you to be able to have um extra money uh because mm -hmm. sometimes like uh, i think the typical severance package is going to be uh two to uh three weeks of mm -hmm. um every year that you've been working at the company each um two weeks of that salary so you usually get that but i i was able to negotiate and get um a month so a month worth of salary per year so it came out to okay. way more than um what the typical will be and that's after negotiations and you know you have to kind of be prepared because um and then also uh pp i want to ask your opinion on this is do you believe that um overwork or you know having multiple mm -hmm. work from home positions is a good way to stave off uh getting uh you know laid off and stuff like that uh, <laughs> that's a double-edged sword i think it is but 
the 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 ethical issue of overwork right i think that's the conversation right mm -hmm. um i i, I mean I, I i'm paused because yeah i mean it's cool to have two jobs number one can you do that and number two is i think it's rare that people have overwork i think we talk about it a lot but i think the percentage of people doing it is super small but it, it definitely a way to st to uh, stave it off i mean if you can sign up for that but two is I mean, if you're doing it, I'm not going to say it's illegal, but I think it's unethical, right, from a business perspective. Because theoretically, you're supposed to be working 40 hours on one job. And four, that's 80 hours, so, right? So there's some ethicality to that. So I'm just going to throw that out there. What's, what's your thought on that? Uh, keep it techy. I see yeah. you. Yeah. No, I agree <laughs> with you. It's, it's, a, it's an ethical issue. I mean, um, if you can get away with it, you can get away with it. You know, just don't speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Um but yeah, there is that, you know, gray area where you're crossing over and double charging time. That's essentially what you're doing. Uh, Cause Fine. some of that time, you know, you do have to spend uh, that 40 hours. If you work in two jobs that are 40 hours a week, you know what I'm saying? Some of that time is going to be overlapped. So it's, it's the ethical, Fine. you know, side Fine. of it that, that i would say but one other thing i wanted to bring up though like um um for one of the position well that position i was talking about earlier that's that's one and and this is one thing about it it's not always like your direct supervisors that make those decisions to lay people off it's coming oh, from right. above you know what i'm saying where, they and they do a, a a walk down of all the positions within the organization mm -hmm. they lay off based on that the way that however they want to save money with for the company as far as um the budgeting and all that stuff or whatever um but if right. you have some irre irreplaceable skill yeah they'll right. sometimes bring you on back as like a, a side contractor you'll see that come oh, right. you know pop up or whatever like that happened in my case i got a whole nother like six weeks of pay along with the severance package like six weeks but i was essentially going in and training my replacement which was an wow. which was like the sql dba i managed the s space uh systems the database okay, yeah. and um mm -hmm. he managed all the sql stuff and so i basically transition everything that i was doing over to him for that six weeks you know what i'm saying so if you got one of those irreplaceable skills you know they they can uh, bring it back a little bit, you know, and and um, and you essentially be training your replacement. But yeah, you always want to keep skilling up. Yeah, but the the thing to add and we'll keep it taking as a consultant, I think that's part of my job is why they hired me. I had a unique skill set, so they want me to train their employees up to do really my unique skill set, right? So a lot of times I usually plan I'm gonna be here three or four years at the max. I was at DOD for 11 and I was at the state for nine, right? Because people like you, you tend to get in there. They keep putting me in the budget. But usually as a consultant, that's your job. You have a special skill set or special talent. They want you really to train their employees up to do what you do, right? That's why they pay you extra money as a consultant. You usually make more than their employees. And that reason why is you have a special skill set. So, Yeah. You know, people, y'all kind of want to bring something up to and see it, it may be um you may disagree or something uh, oh, with grown, it but um go ahead go ahead we grown we can disagree <laughs> right i was just I, I was I'm, still, go I'm still gonna like you it's okay no it's i was okay. gonna say so the first part of what i'm gonna say is this really highlights the importance of networking because you really want to be able to uh, have a backup plan whenever something comes up you may you know get laid off unexpectedly you know that same day and um it really hurts your financial future because you have a lapse in your in your um employment so you have your benefits make it cut off your um your benefits your retirement savings may be um delayed until you get another job and and i wanted to say for our community it might be a little bit harder for us to be able to get a uh another position because there's not as many of us in these roles so you can have, you know, like, you know, black people in tech, but then you see and you see the hiring manager, he's not black. You know, he, there's no nepotism. No there's no nepotism there. You may try and network and then, you know, you ask for a specific uh, title like a data engineer. And data engineer is a lot of positions, but it's also a specialized skill that nice. 
that I want to say when I look it up, it's not in as high of a supply as a software engineer. You know what I mean? So, and and there's a difference between the two. So it's not like you can just Mm -hmm. go from being a software engineer to a data engineer and vice versa without having to prepare for the interview. You know, it's a totally different skill set. So, um, you know, I was was just thinking, I was like, okay, well, you you get laid off, you know, you have a network, but no no positions are open for data engineering per se. You might have to switch skill sets in order to get another position. So uh, which part of that did you to think I was going to disagree with? <laughs> Let me know. About uh, the uh, our community part, you know, it might be geez. for us. It, it, to, in my experience, nah. right, it takes us about like three months. You know, well, it, uh, yeah, go ahead. the the only disagreement I got with you is, and I agree with you one hundred percent, is I'm a little older and keep it techy and tell you this: when you work on bigger projects, you kind of get to know people, mm-hmm. right? So now I got people out there a lot. Most of them ain't black. <laughs> we gonna throw that out there, but. They'll call me up and say, PBR, oh, we got this because I work with them. So they trust me, right? So they know my skill set. And that's why we're talking about keep it techie says skills up. So before you were doing data engineering, data warehousing is pretty close to that, right? So I have a skill set with Oracle where I can go probably do data warehousing, become a data engineer. I can still program in Java. I got PM skills. I could be a project management. So my skill set is kind of diverse because I'm old B2B. So I can easily pick up a job. And once again, I got about 10 people that are in hiring spots where I can call. Now, mm-hmm. now this is going to sound elitist. They'd be like, PBO, this only makes 90. Do you want it? Hell yeah, because 90 is going to be zero, right? So I got some people I can call because I've been in the game a little longer, B2B. And mm-hmm. like I said, my my uh, network is a little more diverse. So I'm just going to put it like that. So I'm, I'm connected with everybody. I got Indian homies, white homies, white females, right? But I've been doing this for 30 years. Four years, man. Mm-hmm. My first internship was in 1988 on a mainframe, right? So that's why I tell people too is most tech people are introverted. You got to get out of that shit, man. You got to start meeting people and network because when people like you, they do favors for you. But if you don't talk to them, go out there and people tease me. My nickname Chucky Woods. I'm out there golfing, man. Meet people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, P- so that's part of that game. Go ahead, PBO. Yeah, PBO. So you know that. I agree with you 100%. I just wanted to ask this is when you're liked by people, but then also trying to gain respect as well, it's kind of like, you know, when you say you have to be more assertive, you know, whenever you mm-hmm. go into it. And I don't know, like when you're early into your career, it just seems like, you know, people may be like, oh, well, he's, he's talking to me all kind of crazy. I'm like, I ain't going to give him no recommendation. You know, it, it, it's it's a balance. It took me 20 years to figure that out. And two is mine's a little different because D at DOD and keep it tech, you know, I'm ex military. So if you're not assertive, they're going to run over you. So they like when you're assertive. Mm-hmm. So when I was a programmer, you used to have to go to your board and do peer review. People were damn near jumping on you, man. So you had to show that you wasn't scared because two is you might have to present in front of a, a general. You can't be up there melting. So I think it was kind of like they were testing you, man. So I think my training coming from DOD was a little different because they forced you to be inserted because when you work with people, they be trying you, man. I don't know if keep it tech yet. I feel like the service dude was saying, okay, do you really know what you want? They were kind of like poking you. So they want to see you stand up because they were testing you. See if you was, I say about that cyber life, I'll be like, try me if you want to. What's your take on that? Keep it tech. That's how I felt at DOD. Nah, I agree, man. Like we're just working on these contracts and yeah, I came from the military as well. You know what I'm saying? So um you got to be assertive you gotta you know and and i think that's helped me a lot more in the private sector uh because i mean business when i'm talking about what i'm talking about you know i'm standing on business like king all right yeah (laughs) so so um sometimes you have to but you also have to be able to read the room as well because in the private sector sometimes that's frowned upon you know what i'm saying so you got to be able to understand the personalities that you're working with you know what i'm saying you got to be on top of that you know what i'm saying and 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 but that getting out your shell you know what i'm saying that that's something early in my career i had to work on because i wasn't I, i was just passive you know to the side you know or just wanting to sit in the server room not really 
you know, talking to people, not really going to lunch with people and stuff like right. that. And and that's how you 100 percent build those relationships. Right. And then once they realize you know what you're doing, then those relationships can come full circle, you know what I'm saying? And and help you when you're in a situation. But like what PBO said, it comes with time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're just gonna have to keep working. And that's and that's why it's good. Um, B2B, especially in this, you know, um day and age for people jumping around, you know what I'm yeah. saying, or not staying in positions as long, you know, like 30 years or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it that it forces you out your shell to to talk to new people and interact with new people and build new relationships and build up your network. That that that's one thing about it. It's a negative that you know you can't stay in a job for 30 years, but it's also a positive side to it too, where you're constantly meeting new people, you know, in all these new positions and building up that network and uh showing people that you you know what you're doing and getting those uh with those recommendations on LinkedIn or whatever from different people that you've worked with, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Is 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 benefits. And like you said, you just brought up, but I was gonna say our favorite person, man. My my uh my LinkedIn is so big. Shout to Kev Tech, man. He always at me. So my LinkedIn went from like 500 to a thousand, right? So now, like um, Tam was saying, I probably start going live on LinkedIn. You go live on LinkedIn, Kev Tech. Yeah, I've been debating about uh, people yeah. simulcast. Simulcast. I, I haven't done that yet, to be honest. Well, you already you already got it set up because you're using is this restream? Yeah, yeah so I, restream. All you gotta do is add the stream key, so you I can know. do it. You know, know what I'm saying? That, that's why I'm thinking about doing it, man. I'm yeah. Gonna, you go, you go LinkedIn. But I live? don't do it. Okay. Yeah. I don't. you do it? I've never done it. I've never heard of it actually. Oh yeah, a lot of people go live on multiple platforms. People go uh YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch. They be going like three or four of them, man. I, I haven't I haven't done it, man. I tell you, I don't it's probably keep both of y'all know because y'all got discords this one dude went live inside discord and invited me and in. i didn't know you could go live inside discord mm -hmm. so yep. yeah so yeah i was on i was on there uh talking to some young dude we were going live on discord so and two is that's part of networking i got my aws off of youtube that i dropped on linkedin a recruiter saw it and asked me if i want to interview once again for it was three hundred and forty-seven thousand. um individual contributor it wasn't even a supervisor job so that's how i got it man just kind of networking and dropping videos so mm -hmm. okay yeah i gotta i gotta check it out man because you know going live helps out with um not having to actually sit there and edit the videos which takes forever i, I need to edit man my edit game man. i need to outsource it or something man. i need to get somebody in malaysia to enter to to do what i guess so yeah i need to work yeah. on my editing man i just I just be going raw, like you said. I need to upgrade, man. Get my yeah, and, a little better. and speak speaking of outsourcing, that's what a lot of these companies are doing. They oh, they're no. uh, laying people off in the United States and uh, outsourcing to other countries. Oh, you, you know, like, if they if they go to India, they can get it for like half off. Yeah, but see, you like because they started that in two thousand. If you look at Oracle, Microsoft, Oracle's got twenty five thousand programmers in India. All the big tech firms, they got tens of thousands of programmers overseas they've been doing that forever the reason they got people in the u.s is they still wanted that federal work and that federal work you got to have people uh on site inside the u.s and colonists cotton in the united states but most of those big companies they done had tens of twenty thousand programmers in india for shit, two three decades when i first started they were doing that Mm -hmm. yeah let me, let me read a couple of these real uh chats real quick no shout out to uh ty he's asked me that shout out to i think i believe more with uh john i felt like i started getting a little ages when i turned 50. when i was looking at first i wasn't getting as many hits as i thought to so i actually took the last 10 years of my uh experience off my resume and i took the dates off my uh, high school and my college diploma and my master's of course and seriously my my hits uh for interviews i wasn't getting a lot of them but my uh, interview rate went up really probably 60% when I did that. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that, uh, uh, PBR. I don't know if you mind me jumping in, but yeah. No, um, go ahead. You in there? Yeah, it's, it's good to remove old positions yeah. or whatever. Right. That That's definitely a great thing to do when you, you know, start getting up in, in age or whatever, right. and you start, uh, you know, 
being in a whole bunch of positions, he, uh, really all they want to see is like the last 10 years. And, and then right. if, and you can put the skills on there that you do know, you know, from those positions that you're taking off. So you want to keep that resume up to date. So, dope, but, but dope. let's be real. When I took the 10 off, I'm like, ain't nobody doing RPG. Ain't nobody doing power build. when I look yeah. at what that, most <laughs> of that stuff, people didn't even do anymore. So yep. <laughs> John Guillory says, shout out to B2B for his severance, trying to get the extra, uh, Days that extra time getting that extra uh money from the severance package. Mm-hmm. I feel my net. Oh yeah, I feel my network. Yeah, Ty, everybody's networking. Like I said, I just kind of really doing it because once again, I just got lucky working at DOD and kind of bonding with those guys. Us us staying up twenty five hours working out buds in the old days. So you just kind of get cool with those guys. So my network kind. I just found out when I was interviewing. I know one of the guys I used to work with is at AWS. So hopefully in 20 into 2025, I might try to give me one of them $300,000 jobs at AWS. So I'm going to reach out to women and kind of, you know, see, see what's going on and see if you can drive me a couple of gems. PBO, how do you resist getting back into coding since that's all the craze? Salary flying influencer. Um, the only thing, I, I'm starting to code a little bit, Axel. Shout out 317 because I enjoy it. And uh, I let B2B chime in on that. When you code and you drop it in production, the shit breaks you on call. I got PSTD, man. I was getting a lot of calls on stuff that wasn't my problem. So that kind mm-hmm. of burned me out a little bit. So I might did it. But you got to remember, I programmed for 15 years. I was on the integration team. So when you get that on-call production type work, oh, Axel, who's wearing my ass out? What's your thoughts on that, B2B? I don't know if that's your thought when you go on Yeah. Well, well, let me speak about, the, uh, about your part where you say, you know, getting a call and having to be on, having to be on call for a production issue, yeah. and it happens all the time. I remember uh, I was in the DevOps team, and uh, I would just get calls like if the job didn't run, Fact. I had to get a call, and it'd be like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock right. in the morning. I've been there, I've been there. Somebody, somebody, somebody from India is super long number called me. I was like, what is this? Wow. And uh, if they, if you didn't answer, they had to call the other person, and you kind of don't want the other person to get a call either. Oh, I so, have. I slept through it and my boss called me. <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead. So, yep. shit. I've been so there. yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to um, you know, get being on a DevOps team or having to be a coder and working with production. But it is um it does make you stand out more whenever you are uh, right. applying for new jobs as well. Like, hey, have you actually put anything into production? That's actually one of the biggest questions that they'll ask you. Oh, but um let me go back to his uh, comment when he asked, uh, how do you resist getting oh. back into coding since that's Jeez. what's all the crazy salaried fang influencers are? And I'll say this is that uh, not like not necessarily that you'll see uh, coders having crazy salaries. It's not always the case. Uh, in the fang industry, uh, yeah, because they pay pretty much everybody over there okay. a lot of money. Uh, to work for them but then you see how they're getting laid off now um but you can pretty much make a crazy salary doing many other things such as like um cyber security right, right. like there's some crazy uh right. salaries for cyber security that they don't even say a lot of people talking about tech sales so shout out to black heights five you know there's a lot of people who making um a lot of money so you don't necessarily have to be a coder but like you said real quick and i'm gonna throw it back to you is that's what you see on TikTok, right? That's the hot thing. So I think everybody believes that, right? B two B. That's mm-hmm. we the new crypto. That's what I'm calling it. And two is, um, I think it just switched a little bit. But cybersecurity usually makes more than programmers be because if somebody gets hacked. So depending on your company, a lot of time cybersecurity makes more money than than coding, right? Yeah. Depending- and the thing I've noticed about the differences between cybersecurity and being a coder or being a developer. Uh, is being in cybersecurity is a little bit more reactive a lot of the time. Like, you know, oh, you nice. you may, you know, put some things in place, but, um, you know, most of the time, nothing really happens per se. Like, it's not like a hack mm. happens to your company oh, specifically my. every single day, no, you know, not. but then um, what, what happens is there's a lot of things underneath cybersecurity. Like you have uh, information security advisors. I used That's to work me. as um in an internship where, they advise the company on what software mm-hmm. they can use for a particular company to see, you know, the risk. 
Mm -hmm. I do that too. But yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I do risk assessment, any new software, API, anything yep. you want. You look, I got to review it from a security before we let it go in production. So yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's, it's not as if, you know, the advisors tell them, no, you're not going to use this. You just advise them and say, hey, this is a risk. If you want to take it, go ahead. You know, that's, right. kind, that's kind of the thing. Okay. They just want to make sure. Uh, but yeah, that, and then for the developer part, it's a little bit more proactive because you get a project and then that's, that project is supposed to be, hey, we're trying to beat the market. Mm -hmm. This new function, this new feature we want to bring into place for a particular uh, product that we have. So um, this will make us more money um, if we get this new button on this website. You know, something like that oh, will happen. You know, I always tell people security is a cost. Um, development, software engineering, and all that—that's a profit center because that new feature is gonna make money. Cybersecurity, nine times out of ten, we go we cost. So that's why they don't like us because I'm telling them now you can't put it in production like that. <laughs> so that they get mad, right? So you're mm -hmm. talking about a cost center versus a profit center too, right? So if people, mm -hmm. you know, I once again I program. So um, like I said, for a medium and small size company depending on where you add in cybersecurity, a lot of times we make more developer, unless you work for one of the big fang type companies. Or was on the side what, about, what about one of the big um, consultant firms like um, PwC or, um, cyber, like, you know, as far as- Cybersecurity so, and make more, go ahead. I think cyber Yeah, and cybersecurity, yeah, that's what I was asking. Is cybersecurity, yeah. do you make more if you work yeah. at those consulting firms? Yeah, because a lot of times too is, um, which you just you just said it a lot of times is a lot of those companies got twenty thousand people in India, so they're not paying as much as the cybersecurity for big companies are usually federal contracts. They want those people to be in the United States. So it mm -hmm. so makes like, a lot of sense. So I like might have to pivot. <laughs> so yeah, you get that pivot. And for me too, is like I said, cybersecurity came up. I think software kind of caught up with, with the big fan companies where they make money. But in the old days, cybersecurity. And two, a lot of times is I make my money because I review code, peer review. I review the, the, the coding part set up with DevSecOps. So in that part, a lot of times you get FANG type programming money because you're looking at the pipeline, you're looking at check-ins, you're looking at builds. So you kind of integrate it in with the development process. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have those long nights of uh, staying up like the 24 hour? No. That you did when you coding when you're no, when you finally got in cybersecurity. No, nah, the only time I have those every now and then is if we think we uh one of them companies it's been a while ago was under attack. So we thought we were getting hacked. So we had to figure out what the hell was going on. So that's the last time. But now nah, I feel like in coding, I feel like we do a big release. Now nah, y'all do more releases mm -hmm. than what we do. I feel like every big release by the time we were trying to get in production and do these enterprise tests, we had what we had we had like 50 testers would come in town that's before everything was remote it was crazy so yep. man you trying to get that stuff in, in the product because it wasn't automated bills it wasn't automated tests you was doing a lot of that stuff manually man so you we, we'd be up long nights trying to get it in production now you got a and b testing you can test in half of the united states before you roll it out to the globe so testing is so much better than it used to be so mm -hmm. yeah because so, i know with me I have um, had to put things into production, and then we'd be up twelve o'clock, one o'clock, oh, two o'clock in the morning, five. working on something. And it, or, or what's even worse is we did something because this has happened to me before. We've done something, and then we copy and paste something incorrectly. Oh, I've been there. The cool and, thing, yeah, it rests up everything. In, yeah, I thought a lot of times too. We was trying to get in. Well, we checked it into the build, so we would never copy the build. Would hopefully build everything, but you know that's kind of a pipe dream sometimes. But that way you don't have to copy and paste as much. So that's one reason I got a cold, man. I was just burnt out. And two, you will know this sometime, and I just happened to meet. India messed something up, and they calling me out the bed. I'm like, dude, I didn't even write this shit, man. <laughs> I gotta figure out what he did. It ain't running. Mm -hmm. So now, even though I, I put it in production, right? They checked it in, but when I, I compiled and put it in production, it's not working. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, dude, somebody to change something in the spec over here. It don't even match from a different team. So we, so I'm trying to help them figure it out. I'm like, dude, I didn't even write this code. So I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go do something else. And like I said, cybersecurity seemed to pay more, and I didn't have to have those that PSTD from putting stuff in production, man. So I was like, 
So, but now I'm 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 starting to program a little more because I kind of miss. Let me read a couple of these uh chat real quick. B to B. Uh, Ty, my man said, "Wanna I want to be a pen tester, but my skills are building. It seems like I have to cry before I walk type situation. I'm willing to do this. I just need to locate a role that leads it. No, that's fine. I think that's everybody, Ty. Because when I first got into security, I got lucky. I just got a web admin job doing security, and I just kind of stacked those skills. So you just got to keep grinding until you find that spot. Shout out to my man. What's up, Chris? Um, let's see." uh black jack hack either try hack me or hack the box one of them has a person who's designed a series of boxes related to oscp they could prepare you for the search with hands-on experience i think that's for my man ty up there talking about for pen test yep yep i see it now yep uh what's the best cyber security cert for 2024 i said i think it depends on the level you at um if you're where i'm at senior of course the cisp is the gold standard uh security plus my my one i think i'm gonna try to do is blue team level one and blue team level two Christian, i think if you're trying to go in the sock i think those are the, the two hidden gems in there um two if you want to go into uh grc governor's risk compliance um uh i'm thinking uh it's not csp it's uh i'm sorry cmmc now has certifications if you want to get into uh assurance and it auditing for the federal government, it's called CMMC. It's a uh, DOD compliance. I'm thinking about taking those two certs. I really hate uh, YouTube show ad during life. Um, I mean, it's pretty short. I, everybody try to make a little more money, job, but you're right. That's how YouTube make money, though. Shout out to that. Yeah, it's kind of weird when I first saw that. What's the 2020? What's the best cybersecurity insurance firms to secure yourself? I don't really know that to be honest. The crazy thing is, I've helped five organizations get cybersecurity uh insurance i just didn't know who they went with long story short you have to do a security assessment security audits because the insurance comes wants you to be at a certain level before they insure you right they want to make sure you ain't got a raggedy car trying to sue it uh insure like insure it like a bugatti so i think that's what i've seen so i, I don't know which insurance firm to be honest like i said i've done it audit to help uh get the insurance i've just never figured out which insurance companies they went with which is where i might look that up and do a, a video on that what's what's the top in cyber insurance uh firms so what are you trying to get to b2b what's your 2024 goals man what you trying to become a uh i don't know data engineering uh machine learning get it ready for the machine learning and the ai what you what you trying to do b2b yeah. well i'm thinking i'm of course i'm going to get try and get another job um i'm gonna right. probably stick with data engineering for now That's um cool. i'm looking at so i was sharing some um some resources with uh citizen lou the other day and we were talking about this website called kegel.com which is perfect for um data science and data analytics uh they have competitions on there they have a course okay. they have courses on there as well uh and it's a great place to get data like uh like different data sets for free like public data sets okay. like um i remember i did a project on it back when i was in college and what they do is they give you a data set and you can put it into um you can use python which is perfect for uh like data engineering and um data analytics and also machine learning as well um, what you do is you can go in there, take the data that they give you, and then um, you can create reports based off of it uh, using a Jupyter Notebook, if you've ever heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And um, you can provide that as like a project. Okay. So if you needed data for like a, um, like to start to train your, your model for, you know, your machine learning algorithm or if you wanted to just have some some data for like a, a website or for a um like a mobile app you can go there and then it'll help you with um setting everything up oh, yeah cool. so so i was gonna do some do some work on there get some projects to make my re my resume look more um appealing i should yeah. say yeah. yeah and i think that's yeah, one that thing go ahead go ahead keep it go ahead no, I was just gonna say that's dope, man. Uh, send me that link so I can learn about it as well, man. Uh, put <laughs> it somewhere, yeah. post I'll it somewhere. Into, but... um, into the chat. Okay, yeah, yeah. but I also look in the um or as well. Or yes. is based on Python. Facts, facts. And so 
I think I did a video a while back on setting up one of those whole environments um, so you can learn how to do the machine learning stuff. So, right. so you can at least have your personal environment and you could set it up on your computer or set it up in a virtual machine and 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 play around with it. Anaconda, that's what I was thinking about. Anaconda. Yep. Okay. This uh, Anaconda yep. is like the package uh, library. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, yeah, Jupyter Notebook comes with um Anaconda as well. Yep. Okay. No, nah, that's the move. I, and too, that's what we've been talking about. I think that's the next real step of YouTube from this sector is getting a project so everybody can get that experience to put on there to help you get that next level job, right? We all in here. We all got experience. We can all add and help people do real world projects to look like real world uh, excitement so they can put those in the resume to count it as experience or at least close to experience so they can get to the next level part when they do their interviews. So that's that's 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put it into the um, into the YouTube chat. OK, that's cool. That's cool. I was going to say I thought you were mine. Let's see what else. Uh, did I talk about? Oh, yeah, I talked about uh, ageism. I got a video on that. Um, two is I think a lot of sometimes it's not ageism. As an older person, you expect more money. You don't want to work 20 hours no more because you old, right? So there's a give and take right there, right? You can buy be get two B2Bs for what you can get a PBO for, right? So from a business perspective, you know, it's a lot like we said, that's a resource perspective. So even though you older, you get paid. Does your skill set warrant you to get that type of money, that type of benefits, or that type of skill? Shout out to Tam. She was breaking out those skill set, what you need to get that type of money, right? So I think a lot of time people confuse ageism with your skills just not at the level they used to be to get that type of money because the good, bad things about IT, that train don't stop. So if you miss it, you might be missing some money, right? So you got to, like we said, you got to skill up. Make sure you own at least the top skills or the skills that get paid, right? So I think sometimes people confuse ageism with their skills just not where it used to be for those things that get paid. So yes, sir. And you know, when you bring up the the salaries at as you grow in experience, so that's a and also I put the two, I put two links in the chat. Um I one see. for Kegel and then the other one for front end mentor. Yeah, uh, that's wow. the one that um for front end development. It'll get some projects or uh, not projects, but uh, challenges for people okay. who are trying to get better at coding to get their skills up. But um, yeah, like when you say that you know your salary increases as your experience grows, that's what we need to be talking about when we're on social media because a lot of people have this false um, this false idea or expectation that they'll get into the the tech industry and then they just have these crazy salaries as soon as you get in but then you have all these crazy layoffs that's going on you just said if your salary is high you may get laid off a little bit more easily right. Right. and it makes some more sense because you're mm -hmm. affecting their bottom line right. you may have and uh, my my director was telling me about how he has the ability to be able to um cut down on costs Yep. But he doesn't necessarily see everything as far as like the budget and stuff like that. It doesn't go until you see like uh senior VPs and C level executives. That's when you see like because you see number. everybody you see everybody's salary. I've seen those she's they buy salaries on there, so they know what percentage you you count against the project. Yep. And um, and, you know, sometimes you're uh you know, when you get up to the, those levels. And you see everybody's salary and you say okay well every everything should be similar no 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 i'm saying it should be right? it mm. should be because i'm saying like you know like let's say i have the same and that's what they say like an hr it's an hr tool right it's a person's title mm -hmm. a person's title should be an hr tool to keep somebody in a particular budget uh category Right, so their salary shouldn't be wildly more than somebody else's in the same title. So if you you're, they you say you're a software engineer and mm -hmm. somebody else is a software engineer one, right? They both software engineer one. You can't have somebody who's making eighty thousand. The other one's making one sixty. You know, like no, the same no, level. No. You got somebody making eighty and somebody making a hundred. 
Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. No, but it's I'm not, not too right. far off. No, I'm with you. Yeah, like you said, it's not too crazy. But but what you see in DODs a lot of time, I'm like keep it techie chime in is a lot of those, especially those big projects. A lot of times it's favoritism. Those guys serve. This one lady, her husband got killed serving with this guy. They paid her eighty thousand to change passwords. I'm like, why the hell you up? Then he whispered, "Oh man, her husband was your boy's." Best buddy got killed. What the hell am I going to say to that, man? I'm not touching that. So sometimes you see, and in, in, in DOD contracts, especially with military, you see that a lot. I'm like, keep you taking time, man. I saw that a lot, but for me, I don't give a shit as long as you pay me. I, I don't care what you pay or to change password. But now, nah, DOD, you see that a lot, B2B. Go ahead, keep taking. I'm going to let you chime in. What you see? Nah, you're right. Um, you'll see a lot of, lot of people. Um, just hired on because of who they know, you know what I'm saying? In DOD contracts. Uh, and then also like, like for instance, I've experienced this and this is an older contract. None of those people, you know, are around anymore, but you know, um, people sitting on contracts, you doing all the work, Oh, facts. you know what I'm saying? And right. they just sitting there collecting, you know, similar money than what, what, to what you nice. collecting and not really contributing to anything. So, I mean, it happens, bro. Like in the DOD to be but, honest. I got to interrupt you. Keep it take. I but, saw that. I said, I said 20% on, I was on a contract. It had, I want to say a thousand people, 20% of those people weren't doing shit. Yep. I, yeah. you know, which it took once I thought about it, I'm like, why do I care? Right? Yeah. Two is my boss, he was funny. He's going they're gonna be here on the employment line. So your your tax is gonna pay them or we're gonna pay them, right? Yeah. So I so for me, I just blocked it out. So for me on a big contract, you're you gonna have a certain level of people that just that just I call them hang owners. And, and two, it helps me though, because those people ain't doing nothing. I'm doing with my job, I'm becoming more valuable because I'm carrying those damn people. Yep. And so, and you'll see that so later on. You'll see that further on in the contract. You'll start seeing where they they uh keep on the people that's most important, and you'll see those oh, people get laid off. Right. You know you what do. I'm saying? Like yep. if you make yourself valuable, like right. that that was my case. Like there yeah. was like six people in the office and they needed to cut a couple right. of the positions and cut the pay as well. Right. Um, so they moved me into a higher position because they saw that I was doing right. the work. I was right. the one actually providing the service and I got bumped up in salary and some people got bumped up or laid off or moved right. into right. another or right. another uh, organization. Yep. Cause in the end, um, it used to be called a death spiral, meaning People know this project's not gonna make it. They know they're gonna drain it. So long story short, like keep it, as the end goes down, people start getting laid out because the contract shrinking is coming to an end. So where do you see that? The other weird thing is I was on a the deal. Yeah, it was the DOD contract was coming to an end. We had this guy from Oracle. I never forget him. Cool Greek guy named Jim Sarikas. We were laying about ten consultants off. He comes up. I never thought about. It. He goes, hey. Y'all train, y'all know Oracle. I'ma leave. I go, why you leave? He goes, man, they charging me three hundred fifty dollars an hour. So his his contract was worth seven hundred thousand dollars. He said, I can keep the rest of y'all. I'm just gonna go do something else. I'm tired of being here. They getting on my nerves. I was like, you make seven hundred thousand. He goes, no, no, Oracle makes that. I only get half of that. I'm like, shit, that's still three fifty. But so you see stuff like that. That so he left, and we kept like ten people because he was the highest paid person on the contract. And then also what they do is that's why it's important for those uh, charge codes or timesheet codes Facts, or whatever, because right. they track. Clean. Clean. Yeah, they, 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 they track who's contributing to the project and putting a certain amount of hours to a specific project. And so like when you get on those DOD contracts, they a lot of times they got 10, 15 project codes that you oh, put right. in under your timesheet. Uh, based on what you did and you got to track all that stuff and because they want to track it and then they make decisions based on that as well. And then also um, back to what you said about the salaries, um, these companies win these contracts, right. but they want to make as much money off of these contracts as well. Right. So um, they're not going to hire everybody at the same rate. You have to right. sit there and negotiate those salaries. Um, otherwise, they're going to try to give you the least because they gonna get paid what they're getting paid for that position from the government. So if it's $500,000 per position, 
on in depending on which ones it is let's say it's two identical positions it's five hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and you negotiate you you get a salary of 220 um and somebody that don't know the game that they bring in um they didn't know to negotiate uh, they gonna pay them uh, um 180 or 150 so they could pocket more money for that right. position that happened to me real quick when i first started working at dod this one guy had his own contract i'm thinking i'm killing it because i came in this is probably 2008 he paying me 90 i'm thinking i'm the game so the guy whispered to me he said man i'm gonna bring you on my team i go okay what you gonna pay me he goes dude your bill rate on that contract is 125 i'm gonna give you 80 straight out i was like well damn i only making 40 dollars an hour i thought i'm killing like nah man you they they robbing you man like you said i didn't know i thought i'm i'm, I'm young young black i'm thinking 90 i'm killing the game i'm on six now nah, man they were robbing me <laughs> so, so so keep it taking so if you don't know the cleanse you don't know the game you don't know how to negotiate um you you will get taken advantage of i got taken advantage for about two years a guy I respect taught me the game. He had his own company. He whispered and said he gonna pay me X and shit. It was damn near double what I was making. Let's see what my man John said. Your brothers are correct. You have to make yourself valuable. That actually saved me from getting let go on my one of my old jobs. Yeah, and two, especially on those DOD contracts like um keep it techie said I was on a top team and they actually kind of rank people I was on a top team that did integration so when we start letting go you start letting go of the lower teams and different people and two is you ranked on these teams so they're gonna let go to bottom 20 percent as a contract so if, if you at the bottom you need to know where you at and take a a reasonable assessment of your skill set it's nothing wrong with being on the bottom but you can't think oh I can't be fired and you be fired right so you need to understand where you at on your team and and it's not a big deal you just got to skill skill yourself up so you can get from the bottom to the top that that's it at, at a high level so b2b you got any more things i think i'm gonna wrap it up man i'm like oh shit, i've been 245. <laughs> yeah i gotta run too though that's yeah cool. nah, i appreciate it no nah, i appreciate yeah, I just, you yeah pbr i just wanted to say i appreciate you having this stream because you know it's extremely important uh, to talk about uh, these layoffs to give a perspective of what the the market is actually um, going through right now. So right. I just want to say appreciate you for bringing me up and uh, thank you for the topic. I appreciate. It. Keep doing yours because you know you 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 um shedding light on some of the stuff where I think we're kind of swinging the pendulum a little too far to everybody gonna make a million. <laughs> so I think You're right. You, you putting yeah. a good light light on that too and kind of pushing back on it now i'm kind of more of let, let's get the basic let's grind our way i'm starting from the bottom you know a lot of people want to start from the top i'm starting from the bottom so i definitely yeah. appreciate you b2b shout out to keep it tech for joining us see the first guy to interview me on uh youtube got got pbo started so i always want to give a shout out to keep it tech. i gotta i gotta bring you back again man, man gonna, yeah help me out man work out yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. You got all them subscribers, man. I'm trying to get another couple hundred of those, man, on my oh, team. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. nah, Keep it tricky. Also, interview me as well. Facts, facts. Get yeah. everybody. I got to bring you on again, B2B. He, he the yeah, O'Shea yeah, Duke man. of the tech brothers. I'm talking about <laughs> get everybody right. started. He the O'Shea Duke of the tech yeah. people. Keep it tricky. You've been on O'Shea as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't want to be, no, I don't I don't want nobody to uh nobody. He be getting a lot think of I'm, Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I just don't want nobody to think I'm i'm looking for credit you know what i'm saying i'm, no, I'm just trying to help i'm just no, trying to help as many because i don't know everything and me and you didn't talk about this uh nice, nice. you know and the more people we have in in here talking about this stuff the the uh the more people that will resonate you know with the different personalities and all that stuff oh, so fine, fine. It's, it's always good to see more people talking about this stuff but i appreciate you letting me on pbl i appreciate and, you man and uh yeah uh i gotta hop on here right all fast right. and all right, man. mess I'll with this you server all right. I'll all right all right i'll be the b take care talk to y'all later right. i appreciate right, you good one. all right man i'm gonna shut down thanks for everybody for joining me go check out Go subscribe to both of those brothers. If you know me, you definitely you know them. And two, I'm about to move on over to Women in Linux. Check out Tim. Get some of that good information. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And we're going to start doing some memberships and doing some uh, other stuff. But, you know, if you need me, ProfessorBlackOps at gmail.com. Just ping me. I'm going to reach out to you. I'm out. Everybody have a nice day. And uh, let's see what's going on in these cybersecurity streets. Everybody have a good Monday.